but Tuesday night between at five o'clock, I dropped one off and at seven o'clock I picked one up. Yeah. But I did, a, it cost me 150 bucks to go from a tailgater to a rec tech. That's wow. not bad. That's not bad at all. That's a phenomenal deal. I paid right. $400 for my tailgater and I paid and I sold it for four. Oh, that's a good deal. All right. If you got this part of the video, you got the live unedited edition home gadget geeks. April 5th, 2018. If you're catching this any other time than just before 8 p.m. in the central time zone, it means you caught us on our live page. You can subscribe to the live page if you want. Just look down there on the video. It'll say subscribe. There's a little bell. That'll tell us that will tell you whenever we go live on the on the live page or on the live channel, I should say. If you head over to the average guy.tv, you can catch the edited version and everything that's going on over there. It's available for you. We have a separate channel for that as well on YouTube, but uh, hang out with us for a while. We're going to get started. We got some um, grill and barbecue tech coming your way or barbecue and grill tech. It just kind of depends on uh, how you're feeling that day or what you're doing. And um, we're going to do a little pre-show and uh, we'll talk a little bit. We'll, we'll, Uyghur is not here tonight. And so oh, okay. uh, I'm going to ask you, Mark, about your beer picks. Mike, I know you're not, uh, you're not a beer, I'm not a beer drinker. No, you're not a beer guy. We'll catch up with you in other ways, but um <laughs> I uh so I, I tonight I ran the gauntlet of whatever Sarah said you want something to drink I'm like yeah bring whatever and she brought me my favorite Sam Adams cold snap so maybe the last ones I'll have Mark for the winter uh, these are getting harder to find as we get into the spring or seeing a line and kugels and those kinds of things start making their way to the to the front of the beer cabinets what I you say you had a cooler Mark what what do you got no 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 there? this is it's a citradelic hop. No, 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 but I mean, you had a you oh, brought yeah. a cooler down from the fridge, so it, you, you had you were ready to, yeah, there you go. So he's ready for the podcast. It's easier because the fridge is, is too far away right now. <laughs> so I only got two. It's not that yeah. bad. No, you're good. What do you got there? What do you what are you saving for later? This is uh, called Rhyme and Reason Extra Pale Ale from one of my favorite breweries. Uh, it's about five or six hours away from here called Collective Arts uh, in Hamilton. Um Tonight, actually, both of them are Citra hops, which is a bit of a summery one, but I like it. Yeah. Um, well, summer's point, almost here. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> it was minus 20 Celsius this morning with wind. <laughs> wow. It's, yeah, we had 18. It was 18 degrees here in Omaha. It's like, is this April? Are you It was in the 60s me? for us. Yeah. And we had, we had 60 mile an hour winds. Yeah. I had yeah. to tie my barbecue to the deck so it wouldn't. <laughs> I wasn't losing the barbecue. What's the other beer? What is, what's the uh, other, the other one? The other one is called um, Citradelic, okay. which is another citrus hop uh, from Big Rock Brewery, out, uh, actually in Toronto and Calgary and Vancouver. Nice. And it's another one that's uh, very hot. I tend to like my hoppy beers. What's the what's the the index on that one? It doesn't tell me. It just tells me it's six okay. percent alcohol on this one. The other one is. Um, I think the other one told me. No, two, both of them are, are IBU free. They're about, by taste, I would say they're 50s. Okay, so pretty bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that tends yeah. to be what I go for. Ah, the orange, though, the citrus kind of takes the edge off that bitterness a little bit, I'd imagine, right? It's a citrus hop. Okay. So it it's uh, it's almost like the, the pith from grapefruit. Yeah. Got so it. there's another one out here called Beyond the Pale, and they actually make a grapefruit pith beer. So that seems to be, uh, I probably have a dozen beer at home right now that all have the same Citra hop, but um, different different brands. Different, different kinds. Mike, you're not a beer drinker, but uh, you've been you've been getting on the trail, getting some walking in, getting the, some fit, fit in, getting some exercise in. That's got to feel pretty good, right? It does. I, you know, um, it, when I started this back in the summer and then uh, really started in August, I got to tell you, toward the end of my walk, and I have two paths i generally walk one's a little over two miles one's a little over three miles toward the end of that my feet were hurting and my mind was totally focused on don't don't think about your feet hurting don't think about your feet hurting and so that's all i could do so the walk half of it was nice the other half wasn't now the entire walk is like i can you know probably what everybody else does yeah. i can think about things my mind drifts and it's just enjoy nature it's good and it's um, the weather is still a little iffy here. We'll get, you know, some cool days too and some others, but you know, the, because of the time change, when I get home, if I come home straight after work, change clothes and go right out, I can get a, you know, a little bit over an hour in before it starts to get dark. Yeah, that's good. Good for you. I, for, I'm turning 50 in May and 
I've got all these 50 things I'm going to do. I'm going to, one of them includes running a half marathon and that shouldn't have been hard, except I've had some calf problems. I have a tear or a micro cramp or something. So I have a total of seven miles in since January. That's not what you want to do going into a half marathon. So I've been walking a lot too. So I've been on the, been on the treadmill, bringing it up to a three or a four Mm -hmm. incline because it's been really cold here. So I get it up to three or four incline and then do a quarter mile, jump off, do some push-ups, jump back on, quarter mile, jump off, push-ups. So the other day, typically in a fitness assessment, I'll do maybe 40 push-ups in a minute, and I did 61. So it's starting to pay off. That's starting to pay off. Uh, my military action starting to come back. I can start. <laughs> You're in much better shape than me. Um, but, you know, so so far I've lost right around 45. Yeah, that's great. But I have a long way to go. Uh, long congratulations way to go. on that, man. That's, and, uh, that's great. I'm now able to do the little planks. I can hold it for not yeah, too long, nice. but I can hold it for a little yeah, while. That yeah. really get in the stomach. Yeah. Uh, I steps. have found for, for me, if I do the treadmill at an incline, I, I start to have a knee problem. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so no, part of it probably is because of my weight. And, and you know, maybe as I get you know lighter, lighter. that would be easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I wanted to for do sure. some incline. But uh, and my, nah, my treadmill will actually do, you know, both up and down. Yeah. Um, but I just go flat. Yeah, you got to kind of ease back into it. I, I'm yeah. I'm a little heavier than I want to be. I probably am 20 pounds over the minimum for my running weight, and it man, I, I think that's what's my calf problems. As I, yeah. I thought, well, maybe muscle memory will kick in, and I'll just be able to do these. Well, that's not really the case. <laughs> so <laughs> I have been I've been struggling a little bit, but I've been trying to come up. I've been biking too, um, and I get on the you know get on the uh, the inside bike and I'll do an hour or an hour and 10 or an hour and 15 at a time. Mm -hmm. Some intervals. I've been watching YouTube videos of people biking and it's incredibly engaging. And there's a Peloton, Peloton, Mm -hmm. something like that app. Yeah. I've seen the um, commercials. Yeah. You run through that and they'll, they'll tell you what to put the bike on and then kind of run, you know, there's somebody yelling at you while you're on the the bike. So I may give that a try. I may give that a try too, just to mix it up a little bit. My treadmill, you can do that where you have a trainer. It's not a live. I think it's recorded. There may be a live thing, but I've never done it. What I actually did is put a TV down in the basement, and you know, uh, I have a long um, watch list on my um, YouTube on the phone, that, and then just Chromecast it up to there. Yeah. So you know, I watch live podcasts. Um, I don't get to interact with chat or anything, and probably nobody knows I'm there. But I watch them when I'm on there, or I have a whole bunch of photographer stuff that I watch there. And I've been watching a lot of Iceland videos because that's on my bucket list to go yeah, to. Good. So I've I've watched you know, a hundred hours of Iceland videos of Reykjavik. Yes, Reykjavik <laughs> and all those other places. I know that sounds good. I don't know if you guys get the deals or not, but there's a, an airline called Wow Air that is ice, the old Icelandic air, and you can get flights out of Toronto for three hundred dollars return. Ooh. Yeah, the flights to there are fairly cheap. It's once you get there that's expensive. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's expensive. Here? Yeah, but burger and burger and fries twenty bucks. You really? Know? Yeah. yeah, ridiculously. Wow. I thought they'd be cheap. No, because everything has to come in. You know, they don't yeah. have anything there, so the yeah, flights in are cheap. And it depends on what you want to do. If you want to get like a, um, what do they call those vans that you, you live RV. in? Uh, no, not an RV. It's a camper van. So it's, it's basically just a van with the bed and everything in the back of it. And you can you could use that and just do the ring road, go around the, the island and, um, you know, do that. And then you only have the gas and the car rental. I know somebody who did that uh, two years ago. And even that was expensive. Yeah. Right, right. That's not going to be cheap. It's, it's going to be like um, the cost of a nice, nice cruise. You know, you can be doing you know somewhere between six and ten thousand or more. I mean, it could be way more depending on what you did. Mm-hmm. How, how, many day, how many days would you go for, Mike? If you're gonna, well, you I think what I've heard, if you want to do the whole ring road and actually see the stuff, so that you're not you know just rushing through it, mm-hmm. you need probably ten to, to fourteen days. Wow. I don't know yeah. if I would do that. Yeah, um, because I don't know if I have to be, do that. That'd have to be when I'm retired. <laughs> I know, I know. I could, I could not get away for two weeks. Um, but it's a trip of a lifetime, too. It mm-hmm. is, it is, and it depends on when you go. Because if you go in the winter, <laughs> you're going to have to count on some uh, some days where you can't travel very much. Right. Yeah, yeah. I've thought about, and I almost did this with my mom, but going stopping for two days in Reykjavik on our way to London, mm-hmm. and so. Two days in Reykjavik, three days in London, then come back. 
And I, you should have yeah. done that. Been awesome. You could have dropped by the uh, Blue Lagoon. I know. And got in there. It would have been awesome. The little golden circles right there. By I'm kind of uh, glad I didn't because my mom was barely up for just, we were in Frankfurt and uh, she was barely up for that. She was yeah. 83. I'm, I'm surprised that I got her on the. I got her on the train. I got her on the speed train from Frankfurt to Paris. We took the Paris subway. I took out her to the Louvre. I got, we didn't get inside, but we got to the Louvre, the facility. We got to Notre Dame. We got to the Eiffel Tower. So for 83 in an afternoon, you know, basically we did lunch in Paris, then jumped back on the train, went back to Germany. I didn't want to, I didn't want to stay in Paris. So we took back, we got back at midnight. She's a trooper for 83. She, she really, she was exhausted by the time okay. we got it. And I took pictures. She was sleeping. Every she'd sit down, she'd fall asleep. So I took <laughs> pictures of her. At every time she fell asleep. So at the at the end of the trip, I made a book for her. And the last two pages, I didn't tell her I was going to do this. The last two pages were all her sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so she's showing her friends this book, and then they get to the end, and they're like, "Oh, that's my son. He just he caught me sleeping all the time." That was a ton of fun. All right. Well, that sounds like a good trip. I, I told Sarah today, I've been watching a YouTuber who is uh, covering the underground in in England or in uh, London. And so I've gotten really fascinated with that as, you know, of, of getting around London on the underground or on the overground. And um, so it's like, ah, it's kind of renewed my interest in London. Like, it would be so great to get there. And I got a couple of friends there that I work with and it should be great to get there. I just need to find some money. Yes, I know. <laughs> we're, we're doing a uh, Alaskan cruise this summer. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that should be fun. Nice. That'll be great. Chat room. Uh, Peter, I think I saw Peter out there. Nope, I guess not. So Ken, another I gym. Ken, another gym. Yep. Can you guys hear us? Just make sure we're having to... We'll do a quick little sound. Okay, look at the video there. It, on the live page, it looks like I'm dark. On here, it looks like I'm not. I no, on, you're fine here. I turned on an extra light. Yeah, no, you're good. Okay, okay. Looks good to me. Mark, you look good. Thank you. That orange is good. That's a good color. Yeah, to, it is a good background. I have a background. It's very bright in here. Yeah. Yeah, no, you look good. You look good. I'll see if I can get a quick sound check. Were you on the live page? Could you hear us on the live page, Mark? Uh, I got the live page on, but I don't have the speakers on. Me too. I got the, the, the live page on, but the sound off. I'll just do a quick sound check to make sure I'm... I can hear things. Oh, yeah. It's nice and clear. Okay. Good. All right, gents. Well, let me, let's get started and we'll light this candle and talk about some grill and get, get hungry. All right. Other gym says it sounds good. So we're, we're in good shape. It's almost time to start grilling. So let's, uh, at least in <laughs> North America. Never stopped. <laughs> no, no, Mark, you have never stopped. Dedicated uh, person like Mark never stops. <laughs> I love it. All right. Let me kick this thing off. Here we go. This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found on Gadget Geek show number 350, recorded on April 5th, 2018. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studio. Here in a, I think they're expecting snow for us tomorrow. It's April 5th. Mike, you've got good weather down in Atlanta, but Mark, you're talking freezing, right? It was pretty cold for you. It recently? was t 10 degrees below zero this morning Celsius when I woke up and minus 20 Celsius with wind chill. Welcome <laughs> welcome to April, Mike. Not so bad in Atlanta, right? No, we were in the mid-60s today, so it was a nice day today. Pretty nice. Of course, uh, opposite uh, ends of the, uh, of the you know, uh, of where we're at, North America. So uh, I, I don't know, Mark. I don't know how you do it up there, but that's why you barbecue so much, right? So you don't have to think about the cold weather? Yeah, I moved my new grill in today and it was a little chilly. Well, yes. we're going to be 72 tomorrow. Nice. Well, good grueling weather. Of course, you can, we'll post a show with world-class show notes. And Mark's got a lot of links. So you're going to want to make sure you head out to the show notes at theaverageguy.tv. Yeah, easy way to find the show notes, by the way. Home, I'm sorry, theaverageguy.tv slash and then HGG for Home Gadget Geeks. And this one is 350. So it's super easy to find the show notes that way. All the shows are done. You can get it that way as well. Don't forget, you can listen to us live on the mobile app. Head out to homegadgetgeeks.com. That's the easiest way to find it. Android and iPhone, boom, boom, you're in. Put on the phone, absolutely free. Best way to listen to it on the road. We thank LastPass for their sponsorship of that. And don't forget, rate and review on iTunes. Subscribe. Click on the bell on YouTube, both the live channel or the 
kind of the recorded channel. That's the best way to get to us there. Or like us on Spreaker. All those things are helpful. Mike, you're a fellow podcaster. I have not ever said that sentence like in any of my shows. I've done 340 of these. And I, I never ask for reviews. I never ask people to subscribe. Not never. Rarely ask people to subscribe on YouTube and Spreaker. Ever since I added that in, I'm actually getting people to subscribe. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. Did, did you get for your podcast? Do you do that very much? You know, I don't do that often. And I, I can't remember the last time that I asked people to rate and review on iTunes. I just have not. Yeah. Said that yeah. lately. I do typically mention, you know, for people to subscribe on uh, YouTube. And actually, I do. At the end of the show, I show our, we have a link page. I think you have a similar thing. And sometimes I show that. But I, I don't say anything about iTunes anymore other than we're there. I say it just because I think it's one of those things. At work, at no, Gallup, good. we our live channel had, I don't know, I'd say 30 subscribers. And I started saying that like three weeks ago. And we're at 350 subscribers nice. all of a sudden. Nice. So whatever, if you're listening to this show and you haven't done that yet, it's voluntary. But you do get, uh, YouTube finally has a really good alerting system. And so if you want to know when we're going live or when we've produced a video, Wherever you're listening to this, head over there and just subscribe to it. And there's a little bell. If you push that, it will tell you to get a little alert, a little toast notification when we go live or when we post. So you can do that as well. Uh, Mike Weger is out tonight. He is not feeling well. Uh, typically in the post show, we talk crypto. We're going to suspend that uh, this evening. No crypto conversation. Uh, but we appreciate you guys. If you head out to the Patreon account, if you want to listen last week's all of crypto, the entire stuff was all you didn't even have to be a Patreon supporter. But if you want to listen to the post show from last week, head out to theaverageguy.tv slash support. It was available to everyone. You don't need to be a Patreon subscriber. Typically, we have a $1 plan that you can subscribe to, and it gets you all that stuff automatically and an easy way to listen to the show. But no crypto conversation tonight. We do have, you've heard from already, Mike Howard and Mark Robson are with us back for, I think, the third, yeah, third or fourth, maybe third. something grill show that we've put together uh pretty excited about it and lots of great stuff to talk uh, let me guys let me start it off with my own story because i have when you think of grilling you always think you know you gotta have a grill a big fancy grill outside well i uh over the winter something crawled up into my grill and started chewing on the metal pieces that come off the burner right so you got those kind of expandable mm -hmm. flexible right they come down to where you turn the burners on at least that's the way my grill is and something, I didn't know it, but something had got in there and chewed one of the things. So I light the grill and turn, you know, turn the gas on, light the grill, go in the house for a minute, come back. And I don't know why, but I, for some reason, I looked under my grill and a huge flame was shooting out of that, out of that pipe. Oh, yikes. You know, so you turn it off. Well, we had bought some really good sirloin steak for, to, to grill that night. And I was thinking, oh man, I, what do I do? Duct tape. Yeah, <laughs> well, that would have been a oh, that would have been a good idea. I'm not actually saying to do that. I don't know what that would do. <laughs> Mark, probably not a good idea. Probably not <laughs> duct taping. Or, but the, so I thought, you know, I've watched Gordon Ramsay cook steak in a cast iron, um, you know, skillet, and I thought here in Nebraska, there's some winters when we can't get outside and grill, and I thought, you know, I need to learn to do more cast iron work indoors. So we got out the cast iron. Uh, I always keep a little bit of bacon grease just kind of available on the stove so we can, we can lube it up a little bit. We got it hot. I didn't get it hot enough. But I put a Gordon Ramsay video. He's got a really simple video on just how to s s really simply cook a good steak. Is that the and one with butter? What's the one with butter? Mm -hmm. and butter. We add a little garlic, so you know, a little garlic to the butter. We always keep a real soft butter on this counter. You know, that's one of those things. We just kind of keep it out so you have it. So right. we put it in there sear it and he only turns it once right so put it in sear it let it go flip it sear it throw that butter in with it marinate that can continue to marinate it with the butter the ladle on top he yeah oh yes he just gets a ladle and he just keeps he's a fast he is a fast griller on the on the stovetop so and then he he bought it with the fat you know his his steak had a little fat along the one of the sides. I had bought these that had been removed or it wasn't the cut or whatever. But he likes to take it at the end and then hold it on the fat and just let that let it grill just at the end on the fat piece and then pull it off. So uh, uh, at some point I heard you're not really grilling indoors unless you set the fire alarm off, and of course I did. So that I had to turn that off. But you you want a good hot. But I was surprised for me that like I now I think I'm a little more, I want to find more of those kinds of recipes 
where I'm cooking in cast iron hot and indoors. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to kind of continue to look for some of those where you, that could be a grill recipe as well, but here in Nebraska, uh, Mike's a little different there in Atlanta, but here in Nebraska and Mike, maybe for you to, or Mark for you too, when you can't get outdoors, maybe you do it in. And uh, so it turned out good. It was delicious. It was mm -hmm. some of the best steak. I, now I use like a whole stick of butter yeah. in the, like, like in the process, but it you can't do off. that on the grill. Like you can't, you know, you could not physically do that on a grill no, unless no. you had the cast iron. Um, so uh, for me, kind of a new, kind of a new th way of thinking. Like, hey, maybe I can do more cast iron, really hot cooking where it's like on the grill, or more stovetop. You know, um, I've got I've got a small cast iron that we did it in. I've got a bigger twelve inch that we could do some great stuff in. So I'm I think I'm going to teach myself some more. Mark, I've been watching you on Facebook. You have been going to these barbecue courses like crazy lately. Is yeah. it worth it? I mean, is it? Is that something that do people need to think about this? How expensive it is? Tell us, t tell me a little bit about that. So is it worth it? Depends on your skill level. Yeah. Um, I'm learning one or two things per class. I'm sitting with people who are learning everything's new. I'm sitting with people who have gas barbecues and they've never used a smoker before. Um, I'm going through it going like, yeah, I'm doing those. I'm doing those. I'm doing those. Oh, I haven't done that before. Okay. That's cool. So, I took the first one I took was a Mexican course and uh, we did uh, pico de gallo, which I made before. Uh, he showed us how many homemade tortillas, which I hadn't done before, but I actually made them now twice, made them last weekend again. Um, we did carne asada. So then I went and bought a bunch of flank steaks so I can make some nice carne asada. We did fish tacos. I made fish tacos at home and with shrimp myself um, that weekend. That was just the first course. <laughs> so wait your first uh, first class like not, your first, yes, class. not your first course of food <laughs> no, no first class <laughs> okay and then the second one was uh one i just had last weekend i think it was two weeks ago and that was uh chicken and ribs so that we did good. ribs two different ways i uh, did the, so typically a rack of ribs i do at home is going to take four to six maybe seven hours um this rack was done in less than an hour for two racks wow so he did what's called hot and fast and I still like my way better, but it was just, it was a new way of showing it. So it's, yeah. it's all about learning. So it's all, doesn't matter how you're doing. It's all good. Um, now you say your smokers, um, are they teaching you on a stick burner or are they, are they have any of the, the pellet smokers? They have a Traeger Timberline, which is the top of line new Traeger. So there's eight grills at this restaurant, at this store. Uh, they have uh, three gassers that are, High-end gassers. One of them is called a Crown Verity. It's about twenty thousand dollars for a four burner holy, gas. Holy yikes! Yeah, like big monster. Actually, not even that big. Just really high quality grills. Yeah. So I think they have two of the, two of those there. They have uh, a big green egg, which everybody knows. They have one called a Caliber, which is similar to big green egg, but a better quality. Um, they have a Primo XL, which I'd love to get, which is an oval ceramic Komodo. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my my sort of dream grills if i'm going to get a dream grill and then they got the timberline and then they had one other one so last weekend i was cooking on the uh or two weeks ago i was cooking on the uh the primo xl and ended up um chicken thighs and chicken drumsticks with a jerk dressing on it a jerk powder uh, rub but it's, it's cool because you're actually prepping all the stuff so the second course like i said we walked in they got, had two uh two whole chickens that we actually uh spatchcocked so as you chop the backbone out and then we deboned the whole thing, deboned the breasts, and then cut the breasts away from the legs and the thighs, and then did one set one way and one set another way. So that the breasts were used for the chicken and waffles with a barbecue and syrup sauce, which is interesting, a little bit of heat to it. And then the uh, the jerk dressing on the other ones, and there was way too much food for the four of us, so they uh, end up chopping them up and bring them around to the store as, as samples. And then tomorrow night is a brisket class. So oh, Friday nice. night is... Five, uh, six to nine is, is prepping it, trimming it, and then putting it on the smoker. The cooks actually stay overnight, so not us, but the people who run the course stay overnight, and the babysit them all night. So I don't know what we're going to be cooking them on. I'm guessing it's probably going to be an offset uh, to be able to get. Uh, I think there's, I think there's five or seven briskets being done tomorrow night. So oh. it'll be like ten to fourteen people. And then we go back on the Saturday night at five o'clock, and then we pull them off, trim them up, and and um, uh, 
you have to take so I'm going with a friend of mine. We each take half the brisket home. So we're walking home with six pounds of brisket each. That's nice. Brisket is something that is a, a learned skill because I was mentioning earlier in the pre-show that I've done four. One of them turned out awesome. One of them turned out average, and the other two were edible, but they just weren't that good. Uh, I had pictures of my brisket, but I don't know. I try to find them. I don't. Brisket's not easy. I mean, it's, it's not. No. It's it's some work. Uh, Mark, how much are these classes that you're taking? Uh, they're ranging from a hundred to one hundred and twenty-five dollars a person. Okay, so not too bad, and no. food included. So it's an and expensive booze. dinner. Yeah. Oh, and booze wow. and booze. They're serving beer and wine. Nice. Wow. So it's licensed. You're getting the food to have there. The brisket one, you actually bring home brisket with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's got he's got some neat ones coming up. So he's got a Mother's Day brunch where the family goes in and preps it for the for the mother. So it's like three hours of prep and then two hours with the mother. Um, I'm doing a guys' night out one, which is going to be bourbon and craft beer tasting to start off with, oh, and then three appetizers, and then a tomahawk steak. Which, if you've ever seen it, it's a rib steak with the bone on it, so it looks like Fred Flintstone's uh, steak. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. You you don't cook it like it's you, you cook it. You uh, he's probably going to reverse sear it, so it's going to be slow smoked for a while, and then put on a high heat just to finish it off, and you slice it as strips, and you serve the strips. So in, in Europe, they call it um, Cote de Boeuf. And I had it in, at my cousin's place last summer. And it, it's uh, when it's done right, it's done really, really nicely. Um, but it's again, it's, uh, it's $45 Canadian for one steak. So it's not something you want to mess around with. Like It's a big chunk of cash or a decent chunk of cash for one meal to mess it up. Just like brisket up here, we're paying $75 a brisket. For 75 $75. Can what well, I don't know what the exchange rate is right now. What's See about that? sixty bucks. Okay, wow, that's sixty five, sixty dollars for uh, for a full packer. Yeah, for twelve to fifteen pounds. Yeah, I think ours is probably about half that. Yeah, and even when I went down to the states. Uh, so I was part of a pellet, a bulk pellet buy about a month ago. When we bought two thousand pounds of pellet between three of us, and when we were down there, I, I stopped off at a couple of grocery stores on my back, and one only one grocery store had packers, and they wanted eight dollars US a pound. I'm like, I, I'm paying less than that at home. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, so the cost on brisket, even whether it's yours or even here, brisket's not cheap. It's a lot of meat. Um, but it's also that time commitment because you're you're going to have it on a smoker for a good long time. And, you know, to at the end, pull it off and be less than happy with it like I've been is, um, is well, one, not very much fun. It doesn't make me want to do another one until I go to a class myself. Yeah. One one thing I can tell you as a as a trick is see if you can find yourself a flat, so yeah. just a flat, not the point or not the packer, and if you can find just a flat, I can get you a recipe that's a foolproof recipe. Okay, but it only works for a flat. I've tried it. You know, you if you look on online, there's people who swear one or two ways that don't wrap it, and other people who say you've got to do the wrap. That's why it's so dry. Um, I I basted mine. I, I braised it. Did so you I wrap it or? Yeah, so I, 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 you cook it on the grill for about, well, until it hits 160 degrees. Then you put it in an aluminum pan with uh, beef broth and cover it up. Mm-hmm. And you leave it there till it's 200 degrees. Mm-hmm. And it comes out, I'm just trying to see if I can find a picture on my phone. It comes out amazing. Like, it, it just, it's... And uh, what, um, what temperature are you cooking at? Smoking temperatures, 225, 250. Okay. For the entire time. Oh, um, I looked up barbecue class Omaha and we, we have this place called hub helping you barbecue is what that stands for. <laughs> and, uh, the, on April 28th, they're offering a barbecue chicken and tri-tip class, $85, tri-tip. 85, which is probably in line a little yeah. bit. What, what you're talking about, uh, on Mark nine to noon. Your class will include meat selection, meat prep, trimming, fire management, flavor development, and presentation. Class will conclude with the barbecue samples and an open Q and A session. So, interesting. Oh man, I, you got me. Mark, do they um any do, are they deploying any tech? Like, are they showing you as their different tech tools? Because I know they're bringing you in because they you know they're hoping you see the grills and a lot of those other things, right? But but are they deploying any tech on this, on some of these things that you've done? The the only one that has any technology to it is the one we haven't used yet, which is the Traeger Timberline. Um, the guy that I'm taking the courses with tends to think of that as cheating because you just turn the dial and you walk away. <laughs> that may be, and I talked to him last weekend and I said, you know what? I said, it's 
it's not any more cheating using that than it is using a big gas grill. I said, I don't have the time. There, there's a type of cooker that most people think of as American style of barbecue where you have a big barrel and a small barrel. Mm-hmm. And that's called an offset grill or a reverse offset. Those take a lot of patience and you're feeding mm-hmm. the thing every half hour or an hour. And I think Mike has one. And no, you, can get some, you can get some really high end ones that you're paying a lot of money for that you're still babysitting every half hour, 45 minutes. And mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not going to do that overnight. I'm not going to kill myself no. to try and get a good piece of meat. And, and um, Jim, you mentioned fire management is one of the things. So, you know, like Mark was talking about, I did have uh, um, an offset where you have a little firebox and that you maintain the fire in there with wood or coal or whatever you're doing or a combination. And then the heat, you know, comes into the main box and that's what cooks it. And the fire management is just, um, it's, it's so, it takes so much effort and getting a consistent temperature. I was never really good at it. And if you're doing something like a brisket, you're going to have to be there pretty much overnight. And I kept running into where my fire would get ash bound. I'd have too much ash in there. And then I was fighting that and it, I would lose all the time. So I felt like a, um, a pellet grill, which is using little wood pellets that are fed by a machine, um, would be cheating. And I kind of resisted for a while. And then I gave up and I bought one and now I, I smoke a lot more because it is so much easier. You know, it's not like sticking the brisket in the microwave and coming out and saying, look, I'm done. Right. Um, but it is, it is much easier. And I know that some of the, the people who've been doing this for a long time are sometimes against this stuff. I know that rec- yeah. The rec tech at first did not want to do any kind of um, Wi-Fi or anything like that on their, on their cookers. But I think they're going to be adding that soon. It is and- now. Yeah, and for me, the one thing, the one piece of tech I'd like to have that I don't have now is I want my temperature um, probes that I want them to be Wi Fi. I don't want Bluetooth. I don't want the radio frequencies or whatever it is. Because here in my office, the machine, the ones I have, I got to leave them over by the door. And, I, and because that's right at the edge, and they'll go in and out every once in a while, right at the edge. I want a Wi Fi one that I can come down here and, and see exactly what it is anywhere in my house. Oh, Mike, if yes. you go for the new Wi-Fi pellet controller from Rectac, yeah. it's Wi-Fi control and dual Wi-Fi meat temp probes. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be there getting. You go. That's that's the one. Erin's coming on. Erin Lawrence is coming back. She's been doing grill tech all winter on her program, and we're going to have her on in a couple of weeks. I've seen yes. some of her uh, meter, yeah. meter, meter, meter thermometers. They're getting really good. Like yeah. it's getting impressive. I have the old iDevices one that the wire that you plug in. It works great. Little battery works great. You know, connects to the phone. Like you said, I come downstairs here and it disconnects from my phone because right. it's too far away. Um, but that's been a great little thermometer, and I've used that indoors and outdoors on the turkey. I've done it on the meat. You guys finally talked. You know, I got an instant read thermometer. This is something like it took me two shows to that. finally get an instant read thermometer, and I bought one that's magnetic, so I can just stick it to the side of the microwave. It's always in the same spot. Mm-hmm. Go out there, and I used the instant read in uh, when I was cooking those steaks inside. I wanted to make sure we were at the right temperature. Uh, for them and gosh, so handy. I was like, how did I ever do this? I right. use it for everything, for burgers, even for burgers. Cause I, now I can get them exactly at the temperature I want. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, yeah. not a little bit over, a little bit under. They're always right there. No, it's, I don't know how I ever did, how I ever did without it. That's, that's got to be a kind of a must to have. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark, you've, uh, <laughs> I, how many girls have you gone through in the last year or so? It seems like you're always <laughs> buying, selling, and trading constantly. <laughs> what, what, and you got a new one as well. And what did Mark get? Yeah, what, what, rec deck. Yeah, <laughs> talk about uh, talk about that that new rec deck. What'd you get? Um, okay, well, just before I do this, this was yeah. my last, my first attempt at brisket. Oh, that's good. That looks good. So that was a flat. That was the that was what was left of it. The picture didn't last very long because it got eaten very very quickly. <laughs> and the potatoes, I assume, how'd you do those? Uh, we do a lot of uh, roast potatoes in the oven on a pampered chef stone. So for actually those might've been done in our uh, T-file active fry, but basically they're just soaked for half an hour, 40 minutes, tossed in the oven for 40 minutes or in the active fry for about 25. I, we've been taking, grill. we've been making just a little envelope of tin foil as well. And then throwing those right on the grill, just kind of rolling it and salting those down and some stuff, man, they come out well. Sweet potatoes are a great grilling potato too. Super good, super easy. But higher easy heat. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. And longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But the back of my grill is real hot. So that's yeah. a good, that's a, 
we roll them up and I just lay them on the back of the grill and they get they get plenty of uh, they get plenty of heat there. Okay, talk about your new rec tech. So, um, like any hobby I have, if I, if I'm if I know I'm interested in the hobby, I'll keep I'll put out RSS feed searches on our version of uh, Craigslist, which is called Kijiji. And funny enough, it's owned by eBay. Um, but it's, it's just a Canadian version of, of a Craigslist. We have Craigslist, but nobody uses it, or not as many people use it. So I always have a search for pellet grills. On top of that, or pellets, I'm just trying to find deals on pellets. On top of that, I'm on a couple of Facebook groups. And there's a Canadian pellet grillers forum or group on Facebook because we have different issues that people in the States do. We're paying a dollar ten a pound for pellets, where people in the states will pay five dollars for forty pounds. Yeah, yeah, um, I get mine at Menards. Like they're cheap. I get a big bag. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the prices we pay brisket. You guys can get it for buck fifty a pound. We're lucky to get it for five or six dollars a pound. Wow. So, but you have free healthcare that makes up for it. <laughs> yeah, we need it after all the meat. <laughs> <laughs> so, on one of these. So you start making friends on these groups, people you never met before, but you become, you, you see the guy saying names coming up again and you start having conversations. And uh, one of the conversations we'd had was on whether or not you can use heating pellets in your pellet grill. And the general consensus from people who've done a lot of research on it, me included, is that as long as it's using a 100% hardwood uh, source, as long as you're using food safe grease, there's no such thing as a certified food grade pellet. They're made, Traeger's pellets at one point were made in other mills. They're still made sometimes in other mills. So one of the guys I'm friends with was about uh, 10 hours north of me, a place called Timmins. And he was on a group and he, he's on a competition group. And he posted a guy in Ottawa, which is where I live, selling two Rectex. And he was selling two Rectex for a thousand bucks or five or six hundred dollars a piece. And I see this thing on Facebook and I write to the guy, I'm like, where are you? He goes, and he actually lives five minutes away from me. Wow. He literally lives five minutes away. I'm like, I want to see it tonight. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I want to see it tonight. My wife's getting home late from work, and she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm going out to see a barbecue. And her response was, whatever. <laughs> so I, I go see the thing. The guy from um, the Pellet Grill Forum had already told me, he said, this guy competes with it. They take really good care of their stuff. I go down and see it. It turns out that this guy has started work at a place I just quit from nine months ago. If I'd <laughs> stayed at my old job, I would have been working with him. Wow. So it's That's a really exactly. small world. Yeah. And then he knows a friend of mine who does com uh, competitions and I bought some pellets off of him last summer. And he had this guy I bought the grill from ended up loading the pellets into my buddy's trailer and I unloaded them. So it was a whole bunch of different things around us, but um, long story short, I'm like, okay, here's a hundred bucks. Hold it until next week. And uh, I got home and then I started looking for a buyer for my other grill. And a guy that I talked to two weeks before said, uh, so a buddy of mine wants your grill. He'll text you on the weekend. So it turned out that I sold, I had a little thing called a, a Traeger tailgater, which was, uh, I think it's a 15 by so about a 250 or 300 square inch grill. Uh, his legs fold up on it. Um, I only used it. I want to say six months, maybe. And I used it twice last year because I replaced it with another grill that I got another good deal on because I was looking for deals all the time. And I sold that grill for basically what I paid for it. Plus I threw a, a bag of pellets in and a front shelf. Um, so it cost me $150 for the new grill. I'm happy. He's now going to buy a bigger grill. He's looking for a thing called a Louisiana grill whole hog or super hog which is actually two pellet grills end to end and you lift up the two doors and you can put an entire pig on one grill at once wow so i've, I've seen uh, the louisiana grills yeah so yeah. have you cooked with the rec tech yet no i just moved into the backyard tonight okay it's heavy is it's really heavy it's 150 pounds yes but the the diffuser plate and the drip pan and the grates are probably about 25 pounds or 30 yes. pounds yeah so I'm going to be doing, so I'm taking my barbecue course tomorrow and Saturday. So on Sunday night, I'm probably going to do a batch of ribs as a, as a test cook on it. But it's, it's beautiful. You lift up the lid on this thing. And this, somebody who doesn't like smoking, they're not going to appreciate it. But the inside of the lid looks like leather from all the smoke he's run through this thing. <laughs> and he's won numerous brisket competitions and chicken and rib competitions. And, um, but that being said, I, I've got it in my house today, and I'm already looking at doing the upgrades. 
Because so, you, you know, you have the red one. You have the red, I have the red one, the lid, right? Yeah. I have, I have that same one, the 680, yep. the red lid. Uh, they've come out with a new lid and a uh, porcelain lid. Yep. And mine has a few spots. I do have a cover on it. It is outside. I have a few um, cover on it. A few spots where some of the paint's starting to peel. And I think that when the red cover comes back, right now, all they have is the black, uh, the red lid, I should say. I'm going to go with that red porcelain lid um, uh, and do that. You I'm going to hold. Go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, you had mentioned that they, uh, they I know they changed the fire pot to a porcelain fire pot. Ceramic. Ceramic. Yes, I'm sorry. Ceramic. So I'm going to do that upgrade on mine too. And then the Wi-Fi thing, I've not seen that on our webpage yet. We're... It's, not, it's not out yet. You have to follow the groups on it. But the scoop on it is, so the new Wi-Fi, they call it the Y-Pellet okay. controller, which is on the new Rectech grills. Um, they're making that that uh, controller fit the old one. And when they first release it, it's $100 US. Yeah. And then after a certain amount of time, it goes to $200 US. Okay. And they're only going to release the people who have the first generation one. So they're not going to release the general population. It's going to be a invite only email. Okay, good. So I'm going to, I was going to wait and buy that. I was going to keep it as it was for a year and then go and buy it. But um, because this one is over four years old, it doesn't have the super smoke button on it. It has a okay. feed button instead of super smoke. Uh, so with the new controller, I got the Wi Fi, the dual meat probes, and the super smoke. So it was a. Uh, I'm like, yeah, for and I save $100 US. So yeah. I'll do that and I'll get the ceramic igniter at the same time. Have they said anything about the uh, timeline and when they think that'll be available? It's on a slow boat from China and they said when it passes through the Panama Canal, they're going to send out the emails. Okay. And, and I, I don't know if you said this or not or I just missed it. Um, is this got the Wi Fi and all that in, built into it? Yeah. So the new, okay. new controller has got Wi Fi and dual meat probes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Because that's so what I get, want. I want the Wi Fi. You know, yeah, I do have the the on oh, mine is called extreme smoke. Yes, uh, I do have that setting on mine. Um, now, you yeah. mentioned uh, a wireless Wi-Fi meat thermometer. Yes. So I have the smoke thermometer, and I'm not sure. I think I put it in the in the show notes. Um, so the smoke thermometer with the Wi-Fi bridge. So you get a little uh, dongle that you keep with you all the time, but then if I leave, I can actually go get the the gateway. Use a gateway to get onto the um, onto Wi-Fi on my phone. Okay. And that does tracking just like the iGrill does for both channels. And that is, I have I have two Mavericks. I have a Bluebird, I think it's called, which is a, an eBay one. Um, this smoke blows them all away. Is, is this what we're looking at? I got that up on the screen, Mark. Is that that right, right there is the best wireless thermometer you're going to get that I've seen. And then there's a gateway that goes with it, a Wi-Fi gateway. That's usually on the same page. You scroll down a little bit and usually has it. What's the so hundred bucks is the retail? It's a hundred bucks retail for that, and right there is a bridge on the left hand corner there. I Let's think you mentioned this last time, but the bridge wasn't out yet. Yeah, it just came out. Well, it came out last spring, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. and it does tracking. It gives you the graphs. You can export the stuff. It, it, it's now there's some higher ones like there's one called a Fireboard, which I think is two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars, and it gives you four channels. But if I have that and I have my Wi-Fi uh, controller. I'll have three channels of meat and, and be able to control my grill at the same time. Yeah. That'll give me everything I want. Nice. Nice, man. But so you're, you're talking though, 200, right? For that whole, for yeah. the whole setup that way. Yep. You can get cheaper ones, but the nice thing about that. So the, on the Mavericks, which is the other really popular one, I think Mike's got one or two of them. I have a yeah, couple yeah. of them. Yeah. Every time you fire the thing up, you have to, um, you have to get in the sink and you have to fire one up before the other one. And then sometimes it doesn't sink properly and it's got a good range. You got a couple hundred feet from it. The smoke is paired together. So you fire one up, you fire the other one up, it goes bang, you're there. You can turn one off, turn one on, doesn't matter. You can calibrate the probes. So you can actually put them in a pot of boiling water or ice and actually make sure the probes are, are where they're supposed to be. Um, service on them is phenomenal. Like they, they're, that's is all that company does is, is um, kitchen gadgets so they do uh timers and thermometers yeah so, well, you know the mavic i think it's supposed to have like a 300 foot range but that's if you're outside with no obstruction so for me i'm not actually that far from the grill but i'm going i'm in the basement so i was having to go down through several floors and or not several two floors and um 
you know, that means that it, it, I lose range once I come into the room. Yeah, I was I was getting about 70 feet in the house and I was getting about maybe maybe 150, 200 feet outside. I can go to I can make it to a neighbor's house, three houses down. I go in his backyard and put it on his fence and I can just reach it. <laughs> so this now gets rid of all that. And, yeah. and it's just you pick up the stuff and it just it's a quality feel to the product. Um, the, the smoke itself and the, the dongle of the, the, the part that hangs around your neck. And then the, the gateway, the app is actually pretty, it works pretty well as well. Okay. okay. On my uh, traditional grill, my 20 year old, 22 years old now, I have, it, it, it doesn't, I have trouble getting the temperature low enough for smoke, right? It's, it's something that's, that's a gas grill. That's the, that's the issue of a gas grill. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't get it. I, I can, but it's really hard to get it at those really low temperatures if that's what I'm going to do. So I had a four burner and the only way I was able to do it, two burners on was too high. So I had to go to one burner, but then it was too low. So what I had to do was I took one burner and I filled in the gap behind the very back of it with tin foil. Mm-hmm. So to try and keep the heat that was generated from the one and then put all the ribs on the one side. And But for all the hassle you're going for for that, look on Craigslist and buy yourself a $50 Weber yeah. and just be... Yeah, can, you can, can, I was going to ask smoke. you. Well, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. You can smoke easily on a Weber. Like there, there's, I have a 22 inch kettle. I have, I have one called Performer, so it's got a little cart with it, but I had a bunch of the features I liked. But I've, I've done days where I've smoked on my trigger and smoked the same ribs on the Weber at the same time. So I had two racks on the trigger and two racks on the Weber. And it just, if you know how to play with the thing, it, it works. And uh, charcoal, or were you doing yeah. wood? Charcoal. Wood, uh, wood charcoal. Wood. Uh, charcoal with wood chunks on top for smoke. If I wanted to go, you know, say, cause I really want to do a Weber this year. This is, I think this is one of the things I'm going to do this spring. Can I really just kind of find a used Weber and, and I mean, in, in uh, the, yes. Yeah, so, okay. Well, so I can just really find something. It doesn't need to be fancy. I just need right. Something. Yeah. So th- there's on the Weber's, there's a couple of different classes of Weber's and you, and you look at the accessories and tells you which one you're going to get. So the very bare bone one is literally two pieces of two bowls stamped together and they have holes in the bottom and the ash falls at the bottom onto a saucer. I like have my ash caught. I don't like the idea of it just landing onto the saucer. Cause then if you get uh, embers flying out and it lands on a wooden deck and then. Yep. I, well, I've stepped on a hot ember coming out of a Weber so before burnt my foot. Yeah. Some of the ones I can't, I never remember the name of them, but some of them have a catch can at the bottom of it. Um, another thing that you look at on some of the higher ones is that you have, a lot of them, if you want to hang the lid, you pull the lid off of it and you're like, oh, what do I do with the lid? Well, there's a little lip on the inside of the cover. The other way is the nicer ones that they actually have a ring around the outside of the, of the kettle. And you can take the lid and you put it on the side of the kettle and it sits in this nice little basket on the side of the kettle. So the two things I wanted were, actually the third one's a grate. So there, I wanted to have a grate that could remove the, the middle out of it. And it also has a flip of edges. So when I'm doing low and slow on it, I put all my charcoal at one side and I put... Um, uh, interlock pavers and then I put the wood on top of that and that's how I do my smoke and I set everything else as offset um, if I'm going to do something uh, uh, searing steaks on it I can lift up the center section and I can do what I use a thing called a uh, it's called a Portex but it, the official name is called a Vortex and that's in the show notes the Portex is people are realizing what the guy was making and charging I think it was 35 or $40 US for a piece of uh, stainless steel wrapped into a band. So people start realizing, well, I can go buy a salad bowl or a dog water bowl and chop the bottom off it. And then I have a poor version of the same thing. So the poor tech started to really become popular. Um, so and that's, and that's what I'm showing right now, right? Yeah. So that's a poor text because you can see it actually has a, it's a dog, it's a, a salad bowl that somebody tri- tripping the bottom off with a grinder in the, in the ring. So it's just open in the center. Kind yeah, that ring pops out. So the ring is a stock a stock rubber grate, and it's just an, ups, an inverted stainless steel water bowl inside it. And I've had my Weber up to 700 degrees with that method. Wow. Um, and then you notice that there's nothing underneath the chicken wings. So the, the premise is that the heat rises from the middle and then gets circulated back down underneath it and then gets superheated. So you end up with really crispy. And on top of that, the, the metal is radiating like uh, convection. So I made that myself one of those good. this year. I'm in a, good. I'm in a rib contest or a wing contest this summer. So I gotta, you gotta get your wings on. 
got to get my wings. It's just within the neighborhood, but it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, um, it's great that you have a neighborhood that has a contest. Mike, do you um, you have a Weber, Mike? I do not. know. I have the Rectex uh, 680. I have um, a gas grill, and then I have the griddle, the Blackstone 36-inch griddle. Okay. So I'm just asking, three. I'm just three. You're just a three guy. I'm just a one yeah. guy. Uh, although I think I'm going to get a Weber this year. This is the I want to get into some more charcoal um, charcoal grilling. Um, Ken is asking, does it work on an acorn? Could you do that so, on an acorn? Yeah, there is. There are guys doing it. I'm just trying to pull the, the pictures of them. Um, guys are doing it on acorns, and what they're doing is they're using uh, charcoal chimneys. So the standard uh, Weber style charcoal chimney. Um, without the plastic handles on it. So they're cutting the handles off or buying cheaper ones and they put it in the bottom and then in the, in the uh, acorn, there's a, a grate right at the very bottom of it. And it's got a center section that can be removed the same thing again. Um, and actually works a little better because you, you lose less heat to the, because it's insulated, you lose less heat onto the outside of it. Yeah. So I never thought about putting a chimney in the center and letting that heat come out and then radiate around. Yeah, and so, so it's like indirect, but from yeah. the top. Yep. It goes up through the middle and then does a recirculation thing. Just take so the then, plastic off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why you use the the the, uh, the water bowl. So there's no plastic on them. Yeah. But the, the nice thing about the Weber, the nice thing about the Acorn is that, first off, especially for the Webers, you can find them cheap. Um, I'm seeing guys all the time on Craigslist for 25 bucks with a cart or 50 bucks with a cart, and people are saying like, "It's an hour away from me. Is it worth the drive?" And like, yeah go for it like there's nothing there's there's no mechanical parts there's no moving parts right. so you need to go buy a new grill well the grill is going to cost you 20 dollars us like it's and you can play with them there's something you can hack around with um the other thing if you get one the trick is get a chimney the i had a friend over i think two summers ago and it, we were up and barbecuing in 20 minutes he's like what do you mean you're done? I'm like it's ready to go. It's, we use to light the chimney. Yeah, it works for the the stuff from the bottom lights to the top, and it ends up getting super hot. And twenty minutes, and you're up. Your, your coals are ready. How do you light your coals? Uh, I use everything from fire lighters to newspaper to to uh, Weber cubes. It's whatever mm -hmm. I have in the house. Use anything like this? Oh, I have that too. <laughs> 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 I have a range of uh, torch, torch uh, oh, flamethrowers down up by the barbecue. You have to, if you're watching, if you're listening to the audio only, you have to go. We, we're at a minute 42. Uh, you need to. <laughs> I think we're a little further than a minute 42. Well, no, we're at, we're at 42. Well, we're all taking well, we're a pretty yeah. So we still, we started pretty close to on time, but uh, Mike, do you, uh, do you like that from the bottom with that Mike or I do? Or, I use, yeah. so I use this for, uh, I got to get one of those. When I, when I had a charcoal grill, I use this to light the chimney sometimes What I use it for now. And this is just one of the things you get from Lowe's or Home Depot with a thing on the top of it that has a, you know, on off switch. And then you could just light it like that's yeah. real easy yeah. but uh i use it now for that amazing smoke tube you remember uh, we talked about that last time i think yeah no i need one for that those are great and, and yeah. when you put pellets in there it takes a little bit to get those pellets smoldering and, and going once they're going they're fine but um this thing you put it on there and, and you know you hit it for a while and it gets them going really good so i yeah i definitely use this really have no other use for it right now but i use it for my to get my smoke tube mm -hmm. going I need I I need to go get one. Uh, that's the next because I've been using the heck out of that tube. Um, I also need to get just bigger cuts of meat. I've been you know I'm a steak or a burger or a dog or a brat, and those are all pretty easy. But I I do need for some of the for some of these and and I would like to go more charcoal for this summer, and and kick over to that and do just do some do some cuts. This is a whole, uh, Mark, this is a whole different way of thinking about it. You know, you could roast this with the with the chimney method or with the center heat, and you could use that roaster we talked about the last time if you got a couple of those, and you could get four chickens, right? On a, no, you no? don't want enough height. Okay. Okay. So the, the top of the Weber would not, uh, would not allow for, for that. But what um, you could do is you could put a couple of chickens on a Weber without the... Um, without the roasting pan on indirect heat after you brine them and 
just let the thing smoke for a couple hours at like 300 degrees and then yeah. and use your meat thermometer to tell you when it's done and they're they're tasty so if you wanted to smoke out of this configuration where you've got your heat in the center no you wouldn't not- you wouldn't you don't smoke this way this okay, is for high heat okay okay the vortex is for high heat got it um to smoke with a Weber, the way there's a whole bunch of, of accessories you can buy. Um, I use interlock pavers, uh, so I have it set up so I put two interlock pavers, the standard what are they, four, three by eight inches or something, on the far left hand side. Put hot coals, a chimney full of hot coals behind them, and then the whole rest of my area is, is indirect heat, and I put the vent over top of the indirect side. In in a standard Weber, the old school fifty dollars. That's right. how what, how big is that? 22 inches. Okay. And then if I, they, but they make a bigger one, right? They make the king, the, the ranch. Okay. Uh, sorry. I think they make a 26, which I don't see, you don't see a lot of, but then they make the ranch, which is a three footer. Okay. And that's the one that's got the, the grates will fold up on the side, right? No, nope, that's put... what I have. Okay. 22, the 22 inch, the higher end 22 inch ones will have that. Okay. So that's one of the other things you'll notice when you buy, when you look at a Weber kettle is that this, the, the wire dimension on the grates is different. So I think, if you can find the one that has the flip up sides and the centerpiece in the middle, that's the highest quality one. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to start looking. I think um, I, we have a lot of military in our area and this is one of those kinds of things where they buy those and then, you know, they, they, they get rid of them because they got to move and they don't want, you can't take, you know, you're not taking a grill with you. That, um, that acorn that Ken's talking about, I've seen a bunch of guys getting those from Walmart for 68 bucks. Ooh. That's good. That's good. Brand oh, new. Shoot. Well, new, 68 bucks new is the right price. Yeah. Now, anything like this, it's, it's, every time I talk to somebody who's getting the charcoal, there's a learning curve. Right. Definitely. Right. And it's been a long time since I've done charcoal. I mean, I've this gas grill that I bought back in 94 has been my mainstay. And I know that thing. I know every square inch of it. I know where things cook hot and where they cook cold and where I can, you know, I've got those rhythms down. In fact, I know right where to put the smoker so it keeps the heat like it, it'll get going and then there's just enough heat there to keep those pellets smoking nicely you know and it's you using the amazing tube yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah i'm putting the amazing tube right on the end of my right on the end of my grill and so it's pulling in air and then it's smoking it across and then pushing it out on the other side all right hold on mike do you find you get enough smoke from your amazing tube in your rec tech so in the rec tech i do and what this picture that i have up here this is in on my grill you don't get as much in the grill because you're cooking for such a short time for the hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like, don't, for, I don't smoke hamburgers. For a, a chicken like this, I I do. I you know I got the long one, and you know it will go for you know four hours or whatever. It does add some smoke to it. I was thinking about picking up the uh, the maze now that I have now that I have the 680 and I have a shelf that comes with it. So I got a th- uh, a thousand square inches of surface area. Um, yeah, I could. Oversmoke my stuff. Now, Jim, you said you don't smoke burgers. I haven't been just because, like, to get the I don't have the light the right lighter to get those pellets going the way they're supposed to be going, and so I just it's so much trouble for that short a time. I have just kind of been not doing it. But for anything bigger than that, uh, yeah, I've been trying Probably. to use. Yeah. So that is a reverse seared uh, strip line steak. So that was smoked mm. for half an hour first and then seared. And would you smoke at what temperature? Uh, 225. Okay. But you could cold smoke it. Yeah. Because it's meat, you could actually put it in there with no um, no flame on and just cold oh. smoke it for a couple hours. Oh. And then grill it. Like, oh, that's, then a, that's a good idea. Smoke taste, yeah. Yeah. So I could put it on at one or two with just the tube and let it smoke, right? And then for an hour or two is what you said. And then... Yeah. Then turn it on, get it real hot, sear it, get it to the right temperature, and take it off, right? Yeah, because pork and chicken, you can't do that with because you have to get it because of the salmonella issue, right? you got to make yeah. sure you're getting up. Yeah. I think it's at to be 140 in under four hours, I think is what the, the guidelines say. But meat, you can. Like red meat, you can. I've been doing um, what I call no-flip burgers where I put them on the smoker at yeah. four, 400 degrees, whatever it was. I don't remember the exact temperature. But you put them on the smoker, and it will get a – I put it on the stream smoke maybe for the first little bit, and then the rest of it, you know, go in at whatever temperature there for – and it takes a, about an hour or so to cook them. So, yeah, that's the nice thing about the pellet grill, though. You don't necessarily – like if I put a chicken on it, I don't yeah. rotate it. I put it on and just leave it. 
Right. So, I just took a, a, prom, um, a meat thermometer in there, whatever, pre meat probe, and come back out when it's, you know, 145, 150, whatever. Oh. And so, okay. So, how do you get that started again? Tell me, tell me how you get started. What do you on that, with your no foot burgers, how do you oh. start it? What what temperature and I think because I'm trying to get some of the extreme smoke and I do it like at 180 um, okay. for 20 minutes or so, and then I crank it up okay. from there. And I might use a smoke tube in there too to keep to keep the smoke going even when I'm at the higher temperatures. And that way, you know, I do have to do some. I have to think about it beforehand because you know, with on the grill, I'm like 10 minutes or less per side. So 20 minutes later, I've got burgers. We're on the smoker. I'm going to have to like get up the temp and then I'm going to need to, you know, let it sit there for a little bit longer. Yeah. But as long as you plan it out, you know, it's actually easier because I, once I get it on there, I never come back to it until, right. um, you know, it, it says the burgers are done. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do some slow cooked burgers because we just go traditional. I get the, you know, I get it up to 400. I get them on there. I cook them till there's, so I see some red coming out of the top. You flip them, same thing, pull them off. It's perfect every time. Like that, that, uh, that works so great. But, um, and it's fast. You're yeah. done in 20 minutes. Sometimes Sarah has the, the meat done though early and I could take it out there and smoke it for an hour. Mark, yeah. so just tell me if I'm wrong. I could put the burgers on the grill, light the smoker, close the lid, let it smoke for an hour or two, come back out, turn it on bring the temperature up or, or set the temperature really, really low. Like Mike's saying, put a probe in it and just wait till it gets the right temperature. Right. Well, that's that, the whole premise of reverse searing is that you want to get it within like say 10 or 15 degrees of final temperature. And then you just put it on like it, on that steak, I actually put it on, pulled it off when it was ready because my Weber wasn't ready yet. So I, I smoked it. In my, I'm lucky and crazy enough that I have multiple grills. And depending on who I'm talking to, I look like a novice or I look like a pro because I know some guys who have one of my friends on Facebook has 12 grills. Oh Good my grief. God. So me sitting here with four, I'm, I'm not normal, but I'm less not normal than he is, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, but because I have a smoker and I have, a, I have stuff that's good for high temperatures, I use my, my pellet grills for typically low and snow, uh, low and slow and anything less than, Typically, anything less than 400 degrees. Mm -hmm. So I'll smoke a steak on those, and then I'll put them onto my Weber at 600 degrees for 30 seconds or 45 seconds a side. Just, and just that's to, what that storyline was. Just, just to get that, it. yeah, yeah, just yeah. get that sear, get that, get that, uh, that, 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 that burn. Yeah. Now, it. when I did, I did a prime rib at Easter. We had a nine, uh, eight and a half pound prime rib. Um, that one I seared first on the acorn, and it was 500 degrees when I seared it for half an hour. And then I put it on the smoker until it was done. So I did the inverse of that one. And I, the d big difference is if you pre-smoke them, the entire meat looks like it's the same uh, doneness. If you sear first, then you always got some outside. That's, the outside will be more done than the inside. But when you think about it, something like a prime rib, you want to be able to have a variety of meat. So you want like the kids can have the outside and the adults have the inside. Yeah, I need to think about that more. This is this is why we do this show because every time we do it, I learn a little bit more. Like, oh, okay. Like I, I never would have thought to take an hour or two to smoke the burgers first, then sear them and bring them in. That's that's God, that's genius. Okay, and I like or, to use mesquite um, pellets for the, for that for that for beef. Bit, yeah, it's a little bit stronger uh, pellet. I wouldn't use it. For everything, but uh, I like it on the on the burgers. I think mesquite I would only use on beef. Yeah, from everything I've ever read, I I think I've only used them once, and and it's got a very significantly stronger taste. Yeah, but even on what I have found on the pellets, it's not as strong as if you bought mesquite wood chunks. No. Yeah, so it it you're not going to get quite as strong of a flavor with the mesquite pellets, but um, I, yeah, you're right. I only use it on really. I think I've only used it on burgers. Mike, you have a couple tools that you've thrown into the show notes. One I'm looking at because it said bacon on it. But uh, what 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 kind of things you've been cooking so with? The one thing we haven't talked about yet is my griddle. I have a Blackstone 36 inch griddle, and you know it's you know if you go into, you know what a griddle is. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So, you know, for me, one of the problems when I did bacon and bacon on there just smells all awesome. It just I, all that bacon just seared on there is just awesome. But it curls up and I don't like that curled up thing. So um, that was one I, I bought. It's the um, 
Where's my thing at? The Lodge. Lodge LP. Yeah, the Lodge. Rectangular. Here, I'll show yeah. that. I'll, I'll throw that up on the screen. It's fairly cheap. It's got great reviews on Amazon. I haven't used it yet, but I have it coming. And um, it'll keep your bacon flat. Now, if you're doing a lot of bacon, you may need more than one of these um, on there. But, yeah, it's something good. The other thing I had on there, if you buy the Blackstone like I did, it has a defect. I don't know if they say it's a defect. I say it's a defect. And that is not this one, Jim, but the um, the other one. Mod. Oh, hold on. So what happens is, is that the, the, where the grease is coming down, supposed to drip into its pan, no. it actually overflows. It always overflows. And so I have a little bucket at the bottom, you know, that the, the, that leg is sitting in that bucket because I know it's going to drip down in there. Well, there's this mod you can get. Um, did I not put the right link there? I think you put the same link to the press for, <laughs> for right, both of them. <laughs> we'll get that. We'll get that part right. Oh, while you're showing that, uh, flip over my my. Yeah, you're on. You're on, Mark. Um, you're talking about liking bacon. That was part of our Easter Easter dinner. And those that are was, those are Brussels sprouts. Bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts, and then bacon wrapped uh, jalapeno stuff with turkey sausage and parmesan. Nice. And how long do those take? Hour, hour and fifteen ish. Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, what at what heat? Uh, those are two seventy five, I think. Oh, that's not too bad. I buy bacon in bulk because indirect, direct much. doesn't matter. Uh, I do them on my Traeger, so it's indirect. Okay, okay, Mike, I have that link up now. And, and there's the little mod. It's only like fifteen bucks. It's from a place called Backyard Life Gear or something like that, and um, it. Let's see. I don't have the live page up. It will. It will do what it's supposed to do. What the thing is supposed to do, and that is drip into the drip pan, and you won't get it all over your deck or your patio or whatever else has happened. Minor, it's a minor defect that they didn't do right. If you don't get this, you're going to have stuff spill all over the place. The other thing I have happened with mine. Let's say you're doing bacon, like we were just talking about, and mine is near my house. It's up against the house. The bacon is, of course, splattering everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've got some marks on that wall that's uh, my house, the side of my house where the bacon is splattered there. So I think the other link I had that is that grill cover. Um, you can, I have an actual cover cover that goes on mine, but some people buy this thing. I'm looking at getting this thing too. Uh, if you go to the next link, yep. and it is, no, one sec here. it is a metal cover that this guy has made. You could probably make your own, but it goes over top of it or protect the griddle. But then it has some little hooks on the back of it. So when you go to take it off, you hook it onto the back of the griddle, and that will you know be your splash guard, so to say. So it won't get all up against your house. It, so it comes up, and then it's the the back of it becomes a splash guard. Correct. Yeah. 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 I don't know if they had a picture that actually showed that. Um, maybe the next one. Can you go to the next picture? Uh, this one, right? Let's see. Here. You get yeah. a uh, lot. Uh, from whenever it's not windy, um, I think it's the second picture. It doesn't show you it set that way, but it, you can see the hooks on the bottom of it. Um, when it's the thing with this is the burners are exposed, and I think it has four burners. The Blackstone 36 inch grill. And if the wind will come from the side, and it will it will make it a challenge to to grill you know grilling that thing if you're in an open environment like I am, and so I do it basically whenever it's a non-windy day, and I have you know the time to do it fairly quick to get it up to heat and to you know season it afterwards. You just put some oil, you clean it off, see put some oil that on it, wipe it down, and then put the cover back on. And so it's you're pretty fast in and out. There's two things I've seen. Um... One was a Rec Tech and Grill Grates commercial or YouTube video, and they were showing using the Grill Grates flipped upside down to act as a bit of a griddle. Yeah. And they were using that for um, ribeye steaks. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, in my show notes, I had a, a link to a Himalayan um, salt plate. And we used that in my Mexican class to do uh, fish tacos on. And it gave a nice little um, yeah. hint of salt to the fish without any seasoning on it. Mark, I'm going to see if I can bring that up here. Uh, Other gym out there says hickory. Uh, I guess he's that's probably going back to when I say I'm mesquite. Yeah, and and you know, probably like Mark does. I have a whole you know realm of different things: apple, um, hickory, pecan, mesquite. Uh, I don't know what else, but I use the little five gallon buckets from 
Home Depot or Lowe's with a nice cover on the top that you can twist on and off. And I just fill mine up um, with all the different things yeah. I've got and put those next to the grill. Mike, that was going to be my little hack too, was that I just use five gallon buckets with lids. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you then you can, because Mark, it's cheaper here in the United States. We, we don't have free health care, but we have really cheap <laughs> pellets. Yeah. And so, um, it, which is a trade off. It's just a trade off, right? Um, we're throwing that uh, that Himalayan salt plate up up there, Mark. That's that's up for folks to see. Yeah, yeah. And what is that? Okay, so to, to, you put that out on the grill, and you get it nice and hot, and then you cook your your food on top of it. Ooh, like so. What would what what would be good on this? What would you? The two I've heard about, and one I've actually tried was uh, cod. Mm, so fish. Uh, something maybe and, something you would do on a on a cedar plank. Too, yeah. Right. So they did cod and they did scallops. And there's something to do with the salt and being, I think they said antibacterial, that you don't wash it. You just let it burn off. Okay. Um, that Willing Sonoma is going to be the gourmet version, but it's the same as it, it, it's, if you can find it anywhere. I just found that one as a link. Yeah. They're selling them at Costco right now for 25 bucks a piece up here. Uh, the other thing that the one of the Komodo, um, Komodo Joe guys told me about was soapstone. Um, and there's a place around here that sells them. Uh, but it's, I think a, uh, 12, a nine by 12 or nine by 14 sheet of soapstone for like $30 and it acts like a griddle and you can cook burgers on it and wings on it and it makes it. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I lost my competition last year in ribs to a buddy of mine. Well, there's only three of us competing, but I lost to him doing them on his gas grill with soapstone huh. and it annoyed me because I cooked my ribs for seven hours. And one of the girls said, these taste just like Texas ribs, but she voted for the other guy. Oh man! Uh, and she was I from Texas. She lived in Texas for three years. I never There's would have thought to use soapstone. There's yeah. some ribs. I cool. still, I still use the. Um, I mentioned this, I think, the last time. What is, you know, generally referred to as the three-two-one method. Mine doesn't work out to be three-two and one. I think it's three. Um, maybe it's three. Maybe it is two, and then I think one and a half. What I have found when they normally talk about three, two, one, it's uh, at two twenty-five. For maybe it's for my grill or the way I'm doing it, I've got to get mine to more like two thirty-five, two forty, for three, two, one to work out. I never wrap. Oh, and what's three, two, one, Mike? So it's three hours unwrapped like this. It's two hours wrapped in aluminum foil, and when I put it in aluminum foil, I add in brown sugar. Um, um, uh, what is it? Margarine um and honey so I, I put all that in there and then wrap it in aluminum foil and put it back on the grill for two hours and then that's going to make it a little soft and then the last hour to hour and a half it's naked back on the grill again to firm it back up the one thing i've i've done one of them that was literally fall off the bone and, and that's a little too much where you know we're, you're taking it in the bone you couldn't pick it out because the bone was falling off and the Actually, the kids and my wife like that. They said this is the best meat they've ever tasted ever. And I said, yeah, I think it's a little too much because they don't want it to really fall off the bone. You want that a little bit of bite left to it. Um, so the next time I did it, I didn't. I, I turned the heat down a little bit or I didn't do it quite as long. Other Jim is saying in the chat he gets quart buckets with lids like you can get it to Whole Foods or other uh, ready-to-eat grocery stores. That's a great way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Any, any of those – containers um uh would work just fine mark we've taken to and mike too we've taken to cooking our bacon in the oven so cookie sheet lay down some paper towels uh and then we, sarah kind of um you know she kind of stacks them up and we get them super flat they're super easy and the 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 towels absorb the grease and it really is just throw away and we don't have the smoke and we don't have the grease fat left over. And it's been for when we want to do bacon for like burgers, you know, when you want a bacon double cheeseburger or whatever, right? In the oven has been a great way to do it. So mm -hmm. she's she's become a master at that. We've tried all kinds of different gadgets. We tried that white thing in the microwave yeah, that, that had all the things and you would weave it in there. We I bought a tent for the grill. You know, I've got a tent and then it's got a catch. It's got a tray on either end to catch the grease that's a mess to clean back up again and that you can really only get about four pieces four five six pieces of bacon at a time 
um, on there. And that's okay for the grill. It still drips in a little bit, you know, and of course that catches fire pretty easily too on the, with the bacon grease. Speaking of bacon, uh, yeah, speaking of bacon, maybe Mark can give me a tip to do this. Cause I've tried it twice and failed both times. And that is the, yeah, the bacon candy. Um, I don't have a, I had a photo I was going to show, but I'm so disappointed in the result that I didn't want to show the photo, but both times have not come out right. I've done it twice. I've done it three times. One time ended up being a burning mess. Yep, that was uh, mine. Caught on fire. <laughs> um, one time I was able to salvage. Actually, the other two times I was able to salvage about 70, 50 to 75% of it. Um, Diva Q has a good recipe for it, apparently. I can't get the thing to, to not... Cooking bacon on the grills as a whole is, is difficult because it, it's good, 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 gone. Like yeah. it's that, that window between Good salvageable and, and not is, is very, very um, short. So I, you... I've i tried it. I, last time I did it, I, I used um, maple syrup on it mm -hmm. and then barbecue rub and then brown sugar. And I sprinkled more brown sugar on it. And uh, it turned out okay, but it was a lot of work for not a lot of result. Yeah. Well, we've been keeping more of the bacon grease around just for cooking. It makes great, it's a great way to lube the cast iron skillet for omelets. Uh, that's my favorite way to get, to get those things ready to go. I love cooking. We have a 12, no, we have a nine inch cast iron that I use for, for omelets. It makes a three egg omelet perfect every single time. There's a lot, a lot of things I'm good at. I am good at making a, a three egg omelet with just about anything we've got in the house. So those are you can that's bacon grease for vodka too. <laughs> really okay right. so tell me about that what is that did it once and if remember this is all from memory so i might be a little off but you cook your bacon up you pour it into a mason jar you pour it in with vodka when it's still warm you put it in the fridge you let it slit it, or in the fridge or freezer you, you make it cold i can't remember if it's frozen or not when it solidifies you pull the fat off the jar and the vodka that's left has a bacon scent to it. Oh, huh. <laughs> wow. <Yikes>. So <laughs> we make things called bacon Caesars vodka. up here, which are like your Bloody Marys, but with little extra stuff in them. Yeah. And yeah, using yeah. it for that is. Well, isn't there a drink where it is a Bloody Mary, right? Does it come with a bacon stick? No. You what? can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ours, ours will have everything. And like my, my Caesar has horseradish and basil and bacon or uh, yeah. pepperoni sticks. Well, we, we, we made, when we made burgers this weekend, uh, Saturday before Easter, I used the bacon. I, I, I just throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds, pull it out and then, I, then re season the grill grates with that little paper towel, just re season the grates real quick. And oh man, that is, that is just dynamite. Did you get, did you get the grill grates that we talked about before? Or are you just talking about the grates of the grill? No, no, I, I have cast iron. I have really thick cast iron grill grates on my on my grill. I don't know. No, he's talking about a product called grill grates. Oh no, 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 no. I'm just talking about which, the actual grates on my which grill. Which was which was this thing. Oh this no, was back I when this was back when it was brand new. Yeah, it's, no, it's I did not now. get the I didn't get that one. No. Okay. Season Mike. No. Yeah. What'd you say? What what I have cast what yeah, I have I call cast it? iron grates. <laughs> yes, it's not old, it's seasoned. Yeah, it is season, and you know now I don't even have to put any kind of Pam or anything on it. It's right. it's, it's already nonstick. Yeah. As long as you got me up with that, I'll show you. Um, my favorite, one of my favorites, is chicken. I love chicken. It's so easy. Mark last show shared with us his um, beer can type chicken device. Roaster. That, yeah, the roaster, which doesn't require you to um, uh, brine it the night before, which was what I was doing. And I used it, I've used it multiple times since then. And it, you know, Mark was right. It is fantastic. So that is um, my favorite. And then my wife's is pulled pork. Yum. And that, that is a nice, it looks small here, but it's, it's a pretty good size pulled pork. And it's on those, uh, it's on those frog mats that we talked about before. I did pulled pork for the place I started working at last summer for 14 people. It's it's a fairly easy thing to cook too. It's just going to take a while. A set it and forget it. Yeah. That's a truly uh, a set it and forget it. Um, do you do you inject yours or do anything with it or just season it? Every time I do it, I do it a little differently. Okay. Uh, but the only thing I stay consistent with is I use magic dust for the rub and I do it the night before. Okay. Um, but you you mentioned something just now about uh, there's a lot of discussion on this, but beer can chicken became a real fad 
what, 15 years ago? Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of discussion from people about why you shouldn't do it and why it actually, and, and actually, um, I think it was Amazing Ribs actually did a, a report on why it's actually uh, detrimental to you. But one of the main things is that the, the paint that they're putting on the outside of these cans is not necessarily designed to be ingested as fumes. Right. I, and that thing you showed us last time doesn't actually use a can. No, but just in general, as a PSA, people really should be looking into, does it make sense to use a beer can in your chicken? Right. Or, or you know, I've used a um, Dr. Pepper can, any kind of, you know, soft drink or beer can. When you take it out, when you get done with it, and you take it off, all the paint's not left on that can. And, yeah, you know, and that, makes you, that makes you think that some of that stuff's still there. And this is the thing that Mark shared with us last time. Yeah, I, I bought two. I bought two of them and and use them and they work fantastic. Easy cleanup too. The plug is the amazing thing. Yeah, you know, you've yeah. Got a little plug and you put it in the top and when you pull that thing off, and you pull it out, steam just shoots out of the top of that. Um, uh, my neighbor got one and it popped the top. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't put it in hard. When I did mine, I pushed it in really hard and then the fat actually went on top of it and sealed it in. Mm. When he did his, he didn't push it in far enough and he came back and it was missing. <laughs> well, and Mark, also you shared last time you put you might put some things down in the little bottom of that. So you got the, yeah. the chicken sitting on that those prongs that are sitting up, and then I put some little bitty those russet little bitty red potatoes. I put a bunch of those around the bottom, and those were fantastic. It's I've, much bigger, by the way, than it looks in this right, picture. Right. Like it easily fits a chicken. It looks small, and you're like, oh, well, that doesn't look very big. You, um, that thing is actually pretty big. I mean, you could probably get enough potatoes and carrots and whatever that you want to do for four people in the, in the bottom of that. Um, you can stack it up and let those things cook, you know, take some, take some potatoes, slice them up. Just depends how long you're going to cook it. And, and, and the juices heat. from the chicken go into it. Right. You know, what's dynamite in that? I did, I did, um, I took onions and just quartered them oh, yeah. and then set them in the bottom of that. And then I was using some some barbecue sauce like Heinz 57 that was dripping down in that. And then that cooked up into the onions and oh my God, that made those onions. They were like onion rings that weren't fried. Caramelized. Yeah. Almost. Oh yeah, they were. Um, that rib picture, uh, another point of contention for barbecuers is, is do you, do you wrap or do you not wrap? Right. So it might just talk about, about wrapping. I've tried wrapping two or three times and I'll never do it again. And because it makes them too soft or what, what are you not like? Yeah, the I said, that's exactly it. Um, I like, I like to be able to have some pull off my bones right. and I know if I do them without wrapping, I'll get that. It takes longer, but mm -hmm. the reason that they call the aluminum foil wrap, the Texas crutch is because it was designed for competitions where they had to get them cooked in a certain amount of time. Right. Um, but it's personal preference. There's, there's no barbecue is the right way if you like it. So and you, and you, one thing with the wrapping, because I've done that at one time, it was fall off the bone. That was too much. It went too far. The uh -huh. next, the next, because and when you leave it in the wrap, if you leave it there too long, it will be, you know, like Mark's saying, it will be a, little, a lot softer. It won't have that pull to it. Mm -hmm. um, so the next time I did it, I I didn't leave it in the wrap. I like it in a wrap when you you eat it later and you can f taste some of that honey and some of that brown sugar and everything. It just it just oh, it just tastes so good. Yeah. I love it. Um, so I, I like to do the wrap, but I got to be careful with it that I don't do too much. Now, we did oven. We started it. We did this for my son's birthday back in the fall, and we started it in the oven and then brought it onto the grill, high heat, and I just smacked him for 15, you know, 10, 10 minutes, not even that maybe, got the, you know, like the reverse searing um, mm -hmm. mark. And so, God, those were so good. Those were pull off the bone. Like you would just pull the bone out and then yeah. we just, oh my God, it was so ribs good. Are, ribs yeah. Are really tasty meat. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to try probably doing them this weekend on the, uh, on my new rec tech. Mark, I wish you, you, you live closer. <laughs> I know. We meet over at your house all the time. <laughs> I want a well, neighborhood that has barbecue competitions. Where, I want a neighborhood that has neighbor. Mark in it. <laughs> Be warmer down there. Could you move to Omaha? We've got a nice, so we've got a, we've got some nice neighborhoods here. It'd be good to have you down here, Mark. And not, not, not to tease know. you guys too much, but yeah. take a look at this. I'm about to share uh, application. Ooh, tell me about that. That was a maple mustard glazed pork wine. Mm. So it was done in the Traeger. It was done, made up with um, maple syrup, Dijon mustard. 
a couple other things in the sauce. I can't remember what they were. And then I think that's tarragon on top of it. And that was the first time I'd used, I think I'd just gotten my grill sticks because I had a problem with my controller. And the guy gave me a new controller and an upgraded fan. And I fired that thing up and tried it out. And that thing was, it became one of my wife's new favorites. And uh, yeah, that was tasty. That was three meals worth. Mm, yeah, that, that would that, that would good. make slice that kind of thin down, and oh man, that would look that. Ugh, yikes! We don't tend to slice things thin, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately. <laughs> there was, it was it was about a quarter pound of meat a person. Yeah, pork, so it's, it's yeah. very very lean. Right. And when yeah. he says she, she picked the wrong week to start a new diet. <laughs> <laughs> Meat is is it meat fat free? I mean, like, come on, it's not uh, pork is well cake. Um, pork when you do a, a pork shoulder. By the time you're cooking it at 205 degrees, there's no fat left in it. It's all rendered yeah. out. It cooks down. Well, you yeah. know, sometimes it's sometimes, basically health food. Sometimes while I'm I'm smoking or grilling or whatever, I do like to have a little bit of a healthy snack. So I I might have some grapes out there with me. Nice. <laughs> and a propane torch in the background. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually, this is an older picture because you can see my old stick burner back there. It was a piece of junk. Yeah, uh, I don't have that anymore. But yes, you got, you got all your. Um, that was such your... a. It was a gorgeous day. I was outside on the deck as I was grilling and, and having some nice little grapes. Oh, and it's too bad you don't drink beer. Well, I, beer I think I had a Mike's Hard Lemonade. Um, gotcha. Out there with me, it's not in the picture. Gotcha. But that's what I had. Yeah. No, no, nicely done. That's my thing is the Mike's Hard Lemonade. I like those. Uh, they're good. They're tasty. Guys, anything else as we, we think about wrapping this? I'll show one more meal we had for St. Patty's Day. It was my day that we went down to the uh, to the States to pick up the pellets. And we stopped off in the States and picked up a corned beef. Mm. Um, so that was the meat and the cabbage were all done in the grill. So that was cabbage steaks. Uh, and uh, that was a brisket when it came out. Mm. Uh, three That's pound good. brisket, uh, two and a half pounds, uh, two and a half dollars a pound. With um, I think there was more money in the sauce than there was in the actual meat. Mm -hmm. And that uh, looks delicious. Cabbage that steaks with just olive oil and, and steak spice on them. Well, oh, that's a great way to do it. So they grilled I, those. I grilled those at high heat. Uh, uh, so high heats four hundred, five hundred. Those. I'm just trying to remember what. I've cooked so much lately. I'm trying to remember if those are high heat or low heat. I can put, I can send you guys a recipe for it. Okay. But it was steaks like that. And then you, yeah, it was high heat. So cabbage, that's, is that one head of, of cabbage that you've just cut in half? I uh, cut in four, yeah. four thick slices. Right. And then but next time I would probably try quartering it or okay. eighths to try and keep the core or more of it. Because when I did it this way, the outside edges were just fell apart. Mm -hmm. And what, what's that, on, what'd you sprinkle on top? Steak spice. Steak spice. Olive oil and steak spice. Interesting. Oh, ooh, olive oil. You brushed the olive oil on or yeah. did you? Okay. Okay. And then that's what it looked like when it came in. And it was served with a warm bacon vinaigrette. Um, I found the whole recipe online. Nice. And then that was the uh, the dinner. And that tasted just like Montreal smoked meat. It was phenomenal. Nice. And then the next day, so my neighbor, we invited, so the neighbor that, that uh, I had a competition with, we had them over for dinner all the time. And they brought over the potatoes. And the next day, I took what was left of the corned beef, what was left of the cabbage, and the potatoes, and made them all into little potato pancakes and pan fried them. Oh, nice! That was that was the next day. That was that's, so uh, that's strip loin steak. Yep. That was that. That was a grilled dinner. So grilled radicchio, grilled romaine, smoked beets, and the and the reversed steak with a wine that's local to us. One of our favorite wineries. Nice. And then that was this was Easter's nine eight and a half pound prime rib. You can get local winery. They do they ship the grapes up there, or you can't certainly grow them up there, can you? We got forty two wineries in one region, two hours from our house. Huh. Really? Huh? We've gone down. We're going to our seventh in a couple another month and a half. We're going for our seventh year in a row to the same wine region for the same winery tour. Nice. Um, prime rib again with a a rub mixture that I make for it seared at the end of it and that's after cooking for four hours and look at the color of the juice coming off of it yeah yeah, yeah. lopta says in the chat he says he should probably learn how to cook on the range indoors before he goes nuts <laughs> with the outdoor grill you know uh, lopta you missed the beginning of the show i actually started with a story about uh about me cooking on cast iron steak on cast iron using gordon ramsay's uh kind of cooking with butter recipe which Super easy way to cook steaks. Just kind of season them, 
let them sit for a little bit, throw them in the pan, add some butter, marinate with the butter, take them out, eat and enjoy. So that was our last Friday night. Um, kind of our last Friday night meal. In fact, I had the burgers. I had a burger tonight that, that front we had done on Saturday off the grill. So just warm that thing up and it's kind of nice too. to have those. Yeah. We, the we keep, them in the freezer. Mm-hmm, yeah. 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 Just keep them around for the week and re rewarm them back up. And, um, you know, so I, I try not to cook them too much cause I know I'm going to rewarm them up. Right. Uh, so we, we try to cook extra dogs and burgers to have around for the week. We've been trying to do more of that with just the two of us now. We've been trying to do more recipes on the weekends that can give us two or three or four meals mm -hmm. during the week. We made a big pot of German potato salad with bacon, which was really great. And Sarah fries up that bacon, and it's just super delicious. And uh, I went and bought some baked beans uh, just in a container, you know, three ninety nine from the local delicatessen. And uh, or the delicatessen area in one of the grocery stores. There's no delicatessens left anymore, so you had to get to the grocery store. But um, nice to have some baked beans around, uh, kind of where you can spoon a few things of those out, warm them up. I, I don't mind them cold, to be honest with you. And and I'm a big fan of baked beans and in, in, in a in like a um, like a noodle salad or like a macaroni salad and have those together and actually kind of mix them. Now this is gross, going to gross some people out, but I like those two together. Uh, so put them together and then just don't, don't mix it, but mix them as you're eating them. Oh man, really good. We add some devil spit to our, um, to our baked beans too. And that kind of gives them a little, kind of gives kick. them a heat. Yeah. A little Mark Nana, you are a rec tech, part of the rec tech family. You should check out some of the Rectech uh, spices. So this is this is my part of my collection and my favorite. I love the the one there. It says Steakhouse Rub. We put that on our steaks. Uh, first time we did it was when my wife and I were out uh, at a cabin, you know, for a weekend, and we put that on there, and it was just fantastic. And then came home that you know later that uh, weekend and did another one at home. And with that stuff, same stuff, and that of the whole of all the rec tech stuff, I like that one the best. The barbecue sauce is a little thin. If you like the thinner, a little more liquid sauce, then theirs is good. The hot one, uh, I don't know what it is. I grew up in Louisiana. I could I could drink Tabasco, but now for whatever reason, at my age, hot things are starting to get became hotter for whatever reason. Um, so I like the one in the black top that's not quite as hot. Of of the of that, I find that. I'm not sure I bought the same other than stubs, which I sort of, I use as a base for other stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think I bought the same sauce or rub more than once. I'm always trying different ones. Um, like right now I've got five or six dizzy pigs. Um, I picked up another one last weekend from the, from my cooking class. It was a jerk rub. Uh, yeah. Like the, my, the barbecue store I'm going to taking these classes and they have wall, literally walls of sauce and rubs. Yeah. Um, but I started out making my own. So I would go online and, and my pulled pork, I use a Big da big Daddy's Carolina style barbecue sauce for it, like a really tangy, vinegary. And that's my my go-to. Every time I do pulled pork, I, I if I'm doing it at home, I'll make my own uh, barbecue sauce for it. And it just, it blows away anything I've ever had in, in, a, in a bottle. Okay. And it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of time to do it. And right. But uh, and it is fun. You were given uh, lopped a little a uh, little advice in the chat room about uh, large trout. Could I could I do a salmon that way? Could I put salmon on a board, low heat, and smoke for three or four hours and get it up to the right temperature and do it that way? I think so. I haven't done it. Um, that was actually a fresh salmon that they caught filleted or caught cleaned and froze, and then thought it out for think for a Thanksgiving weekend, and we cooked it for five hours on a smoker I'd never used before. Yeah, but it turned out it was pretty delicious. amazing. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing, right? You're just trying to get it up to a temperature. Right? Yeah, and, and a fish tend to be easier to do, uh, safer to do than a pork or salmon, I or pork or um, chicken. I think. Like we cooked this thing. I don't think it probably got above 250 degrees for the five hours we cooked it. Right. Did but you temperature sense it? Did you check temperature on that before you pulled it off, or no? We just flaked it. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. And it was it was a thing called a uh, I think they call it a master craft smoker. It has no bottom panel. It's got no. It's not sealed at all. The the, the bottom is is open to the outside, and it's got a bowl of charcoal that sits in the middle of it. And a pain was you had to go and stir the coals every half hour. Um, 
there's no air control. There's no, there's no controls on it at all. You're just sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I I need to try. I want to try my own salmon that way. I think that's something we're going to do this summer where I want to try and figure out how to do salmon. Right. uh, On your Weber, get your Weber and. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do smoking, that's the easiest way to get into it. Right. Buy one for 50 bucks. Right. Pay twenty five dollars in accessories for it. Go right. and get the wood chunks you want. Like if you're something like a salmon, you're going to want something light, like an alder or I think an oak or a. And there's also a chart you can get on what woods go to what, uh, right. what food. But um, set up for offset. Put a water pan in the bottom of it, and just let the thing go for right. an afternoon. Let it go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have to I have to monkey around with it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go pick up a web or something maybe. But it's fun to play with. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, that's, yeah. That, no, right on. Um, and maybe practice on hot dogs, <laughs> you know, right? Uh, chicken wings. Throw some dogs in there. Oh, and... Chicken wings are awesome. Chicken wings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Because, you know, yeah, it's something I don't necessarily want to waste till I figure out because it's all about temperature management, right? right. At the yeah. end of the day. And on the Weber, yeah. there's two forms. If you're going to be using it like that, there's two ways you got to get your temperature down. One is going to be grilling, just burgers, dogs, stuff like that. Right. And the other way is offset. So that's what you want to do offset, whether it's smoking or whether it's higher offset. Like if I'm doing chicken wings, I do it at a higher temperature. Uh, I'm still doing offset because I don't want my chicken wings dropping the grease onto the fire. Right. So I cook it. Do you put your fire in the middle or do you push your fire to the side and put the wings in the middle? Okay. So I I, got it. Two interlock bricks or interlock pavers, push all the way to one side until it only leaves about five inches of gap. Yeah, I can take pictures if you pick one up, and I'll show you how no, to do they it. They make they make trays for that too for the Weber, right? That they make be- one. Uh, there's there's a couple of, of smoking adapters for them. They want about a hundred bucks for them. Okay. Um, yeah, one the hold paver, a water the pan. Pavers are seventy nine cents at Menards. <laughs> That's exactly it. And I had them. I had a bunch of them hits in here, so I just put them to the side. And I'm like, I'll try these, see if they explode. And I've been using them for. Years now. No, that's a good way to do it. That's a good. That's a good way indeed. All right, I have to try. And so wings on one side, and then when what do you what what are you trying to get with the with, like with wings and and you're smoking? How long and what kind of temperature am I shooting for? Yeah, inside to, temperature. Uh, I end up doing my wings typically to 190, even though they're done at 160. Okay. But as long as they're still juicy, I don't care. Yeah. And how how often do you uh, go out and and rebaste them. Uh, typically, I do them dry because my wife likes them dry. Oh, I do, I do too. It. And oh, I only dry. flip them once, about halfway through. I okay. Them. So no, nothing on them. Maybe a little rub. Throw them yeah. in. Get them cooked. Bring them in. Soak them, or whatever. If you're gonna, if you're gonna soak use them or dip them. Sauce. I could get some buffalo wild wings. I love their their blue moon barbecue or the red hot buffalo sauce. Barbecue. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then and then get them extra wet. We really like them extra wet, so we could or. Just, or take them off, and I've done this before with my um, my moink balls. Uh, one last picture here. Um, so the that was my first attempt at chicken drumsticks and moink balls, and the balls on top are meatballs wrapped in bacon, dusted with barbecue powder, mm. cooked until they're almost done. Then you take them all off, and you dip them in barbecue sauce and put them back on the grill again, so it caramelizes. So they're sticky, like they're they're. So they were done yeah. after they were sauced after they're done cooking. And you you put them on high heat to sear them. Is that the nope. okay? Just the nope, still into it. At three at three three hundred degrees two seventy five. Just until that sauce gets kind of thick. Yeah, thick yeah. and sticky. Yeah. And they were that was. We, there's a thing up here called an instant pot, which is uh, yeah. like an electric um, pressure cooker. Yeah, so it was invented down the roof of my house. Um. So my neighbor has one, and he said, we're going to do barbecue. We're going to do ribs tonight. And I said, if we're having ribs and not in the barbecue, I'm going to bring them over some barbecue just so I have some. <laughs> and uh, I brought those over. That's funny. That's and funny. they disappeared pretty quick. Yo, I'm sure they did. I am sure they did. Well, lots of ideas. We've, we're going to have a bunch of links in the show notes. Uh, some stuff we did. We're not, I'm not going to get everything in the show notes. But, guys, if you... If we talked about something and I didn't get it in the show notes, if you take maybe tonight or tomorrow or whatever and get those in the show notes for me, that'd be helpful. We have on that shared doc. So um, that'd be awesome. I'll try and add in that chicken roaster as well. That's just 30 bucks uh, yeah. on Amazon right now. Yeah. So and easy not, to use. Yeah. Yeah. Super easy to use. And easy clean it. Mike, what have you used 
did you just, did you put beer in there when, when you did your no chip, you I, your I put um put some butter <laughs> yeah totally I think I'll put like maybe applesauce or something like that yeah. and then you know some of whatever seasoning I'm using I right. put that in there too yeah uh, it's it's super easy and yeah. uh, super good we don't use it enough I need to use a bunch of it this uh, this summer and get it done but good uh, good stuff tonight as always if you don't if you listen to this and you don't walk away hungry there's a problem. So lots of great stuff that we talked about tonight and, and lots of good links in the show notes. So head, head over to the average guy.tv slash HGG three, five, zero, lots of good stuff. Of course, both Mike and Mark, uh, good friends of home gadget geeks out there in the chat room all the time. Mike, Mark, thanks for coming back on. Always good to have you for our, our annual. Do we do this? Uh, is, is it annual or sub or semi-annual? What are annual? Is it annual? Think- it's in the spring. I think uh, what... We've had it. The first thing, the first one was late season because you've only found out about it in the in the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're spring in the spring. Like now. a good time. So, it's yeah. it's yeah, it's it's good. We got three of these. If you want to go back and hear the other ones, there's I think there's three more uh, of those back. So so good stuff. Um, if you want to, no no post show tonight. I mean, we we're gonna hang around for a few minutes, but no post show tonight. Don't forget uh, all the post show. If you're into the crypto stuff, we've been doing. Mike and I have been talking a lot about crypto. It's on our Patreon page. Last week's show, which was all crypto, available for free. Just head out there, theaverageguy.tv slash support. And I think I got theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon working as well. So you can head out there, uh, last week's show and post show, which was I thought was pretty cool. We got some good feedback on it available out there on Patreon. Oh, I was going to read the Patreon supporters. Let me do that really quick because this is always a good time. We got a few of them here. Uh, but but uh, everybody who supports the show, Brian Auer, Amar Riggins, Nathaniel Linnelly, Chad Davis, Emily Prokop out there right now, host of the story behind. Kevin, and Kevin put his last name, so I'm not going to read it. Chris Brown, uh, Gavin Campbell, Ryan Kirshner, Jonathan Hill, Jay Cleveland Payne, Chad Johnson, Mark Robson. There you go, Mark. Thank you for your sponsorship here. Trevor Stevens, John Larson, Paul Brerin, Michael Ray, John Biggs, Ed Ramirez, Justin Simmons, Dennis Pillow, uh, Mike Shell, Dwayne Johnson, Peter Dennett, Dennett, I can never pronounce his name right, Peter, I'm sorry. Mike Weger, Jim Shoemaker, Malcolm Lacey, Eric Donofsky, and of course, Steve Sleeper over at the North Omaha Podcast, one of my favorite podcasts to listen to about North O. Uh, we guys appreciate your, your Patreon support. Thanks for doing that as well. A dollar gets you in and all the post-show stuff. Uh, if you want to catch up on all that, uh, and it's a dollar a month, not too bad. You can also send me an email, Jim at the average guy.tv, track me down on Twitter at Jay Collison. I'm pretty active on Twitter. If you want to contact me that way, it's a good way to do it. Tony Rayner is the best tweeter of all time. So if you're on Twitter, you got to follow Tony. He is really funny and uh, some good tweets. And of course, Rich Hay is out there doing some great stuff. And Dave McCabe is out there. So if you're not on Twitter yet, you might want to check it out. Uh, some good stuff going on out there. The average guy.tv platform, both web hosting and, and uh, web hosting and media hosting powered by Maple Grove partners, get secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people that, you know, and trust. And of course, you know, that's Christian. He's going to be on back for cyber frontiers next week. So we're going to record one of those. We'll have a new cyber frontiers for you out there as well. And he's been super busy at work and should be, he's a smart kid. So, uh, he is coming up as well. Don't forget. You can catch home gadget geeks, both Android, uh, both on Android and the iPhone app. It's available and it's really the best way to listen to us live. You can catch that. The easiest way to do that is just download it from homegadgetgeeks.com. That's the easiest way to do it. Thank LastPass for the sponsorship of that. Um, and, of course, it's available for free for you. Thank LastPass, and uh, we appreciate their sponsorship. T-shirts are still available, theaverageguy.tv slash shirt. I wore it on Saturday to ask the podcast coach. You can still get them out there if you want to get that. I think they're 18 bucks. Pretty cheap one final announcement uh we were going to try and do a meetup in the fall and it's just not in the cards this year i just could not get it pulled off with the uh, location and the planning i have a wedding this summer just not going to be able to pull it off so the good news is i'll start working on next year's early <laughs> see if i can get ahead of it the first one is the hardest one to do. that's a big deal uh, it was just super hard to get everything pulled together and I could not get all the timing together and I'm, and it's late, it's already April and I wanted to do it in September. So, uh, we're going to start doing some other things. So if you were hanging on that for that, hang tight, we'll do one. We'll go around next year. Uh, figure it out that way. See if we can get, uh, it, if we do it in September, maybe we could do a big grill. Uh, we get, maybe get some grill sponsorship and get some grills out of Uyghur's place and we'll just grill. 
all Friday That's night. Awesome. Just all be grilling. That would be that would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Just have some meats ready and just grill and eat and drink. It'll be great. So we are live every Thursday, just about every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, 9 Eastern out at the average guy.tv slash live. For those joining us live, thanks for coming out. Uh, we'll do a little bit of post show. It won't make any kind of it, we won't do anything with it. But with that, we'll say good night, everybody. Good night. All right, guys. Great job, guys. <laughs> that my, that was he didn't see it earlier. That I don't think. was so good when you did that. Like this. I was like, what the heck is that? I was looking away. I was holding it for a long time, waiting oh, for the, the right intro. Man, it was that was dynamite. You that made me laugh a lot. Mike, when I when I light my uh, smoking tube, I yeah. put it up on a couple of interlock bricks, and the tube's about like this long. Yeah. So I put it up on a couple of interlock bricks, put that torch beside it because I have the same one. Put it beside it on the table and have the thing firing so it's hitting the very end of it. So I got this. If anybody's looking outside, they're like, "What the hell is he doing?" <laughs> <laughs> I got, I'm lighting something on fire where the stick on top of bricks is about two feet tall by the time the whole thing's done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what I did just do is I went and bought some um, gel fuel. Not jet fuel, but gel fuel. Gel, yeah. yeah. Um, and apparently that's another way of lighting them. So you yeah. put some of that stuff on it, light the gel fuel, and let it burn, go out. Okay. Pour, pour it on the end, then light the gel fuel. Yeah. And I like Mike's method. I need to get... Mike, do you lay yours down and then just light it? I do. Uh, yeah, just lay it down wherever I'm going to put it. Right. And then just, you know, How stick long? this... Just until it gets just until yeah. it gets lit. When you when you first do it, those those uh, little pellets will glow. Yeah, they're not quite ready yet. You right. need to see them like you know on it's fire. Yeah, it, sure. take, it, it takes it a little bit to to really get going. So you know, a minute or two minutes, like like Mark said. Mark, uh, Mike's at, or uh, Ken is asking about a recommended instant thermometer. What do you what do you like? We we talked about this before. I bought one that yeah. you recommended. I, I have the one. Well, I have yeah, I, I have the one, one I have. I, I got one that company makes that smoke one that you saw before. They make a uh, thermal works. I think it is. Actually, if you go right to the front page, it's the best. It's they are known to be the best. They're a chef rated one. They're uh, hold on. Let's see if I can find it. I just posted it on the chat. Oh, okay. Let's see if we can thermal. Oh, so it's thermal works. Yeah. yeah. I have this one. I'll post in the chat. They're not cheap. They're they're between. You can get them on sale. I think the last one I bought, or the only one I bought from them, was sixty dollars US. The one I have, and the, the one that has come up here is red. I have a blue one. Well, not that that matters, but um, it's like fifty bucks. Yeah, you can get you can get cheaper ones, but the the difference is the length of time it takes for the probe to read accurately. Yeah. So I know I don't I don't know I haven't seen Mike's yet, but if you look at the one on the Thermopen one, if you look at the tip of it, it's like a needle. Mm -hmm. um, because you, the, it's an RTD or thermocouple inside them, and the, the metal had to get hot enough so they want to have a smaller tip so it reacts faster. Yeah. This one says it's a two to three second reading, so I don't know. Yeah, it's the same as Thermworks. This, this is the one I bought, uh, a, a Kaizen, K-I-Z-E-N. 25 bucks. Um, not bad. Works, works pretty well. It's got a little magnet on it. And see the um, tip again? That's not a bad one. You see how, see how it's a smaller tip? Right. So yeah. it reacts faster. That's yeah. the whole point of them. Yeah, it's I, been great. It's got a light. It it you can do different. You can do the temperatures. You know Celsius, whatever. Yeah. And it gives you an, an indicator on there as to what is uh, acceptable for different meats. Right. That for me that was key. It had a little key, <laughs> you know, at the top of like yeah. okay, because I always forget like okay, what's poultry or okay, what's I, beef or what's medium. The, I think in the very first show we did, I had that little magnet card that has those those things on yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I refer to that sometimes too. Mm -hmm. And mine has a magnet on it too. My my instant read, I have it stuck to the side of my refrigerator, um, and so it's e really easy to go get. The new version of, of the one I had <laughs> is nice because it actually has a uh, rotational screen on it. Mine doesn't, so it actually it's always vertical. Mm -hmm. uh, Emily says uh, we have an internal thermometer, and then Mark had to get the infrared thermometer so he could point the laser at the meat. I have that too. <laughs> I have one too, but I, I maybe it's not meant for food. It's sort of one to get at Home Depot or Lowe's, yeah. and I haven't found it to be that accurate. I um, use it for me measuring my uh, pizza stone. If, if I'm trying to figure out what the temperature of the grill is and stuff, or the pizza stone when I'm going to get when I'm uh, going to do pizza on it, 
I that fire actually through the top. Yeah, that'd be a good way to do it because I think it's only measuring the outside temperature. It's it not, is. Yeah, it's, not, it's, not. it's a gadget. I only yeah. should understand Mark wants gadgets. <laughs> of course. <laughs> But that would be a great to see what the temperature, you know, if you wanted to get a, uh, if you had a pan on there or a skillet. When I was cooking the steaks, Gordon Ramsay recommends if you're going to do it in a cast iron, it really needs to be smoking. That's how hot he wants it. As soon as that grease in there, and he, he had a little more olive oil than I did bacon grease. But he wants that thing, as soon as it starts smoking, boom, throw the, you, you, know, throw, you know, throw those in and they'll sear super fast. But olive oil has a lower smoking point than bacon grease, probably. Olive oil is one of the lowest smoking points you can get. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted it hot. Yeah. He was like, you know, he, he wanted it hot. So it was, it was, um, I did, I ended up not using any olive oil. I, I sprayed a little bit. I did bacon grease and then I put a little Pam in there. And it could have been hotter. I was just, I was anxious to get the steaks in the cash sure. Just to tease you guys, if I got one more appetizer I want to show you guys. I do this a few times a year because they're a pain to make, but they're ba they're basically a breakfast on the go. <laughs> so th that's hard boiled egg wrapped in sausage meat and wrapped in bacon. Oh my God. <laughs> and then I put them on the grill and I think I actually breaded these ones too. So you got a little bit of bread on the outside, then you got the bacon, then you got the sausage and you got hard boiled egg on the inside. Oh my gosh. Do you have a, you have a picture of cutting into one? Uh, oh, not in this no. one. Okay. They, uh, they're called Scotch eggs, and they're something my, my mother used to do every year for Christmas. And about two years ago, I started doing them on the grill, and now I'm doing them a few times a year. And my aunt came over. Um, she was visiting last summer, and she's like, what are you wrapping them in bacon for? Well, if you cook them traditionally, the the, the sausage um, uh, cracks open. Yeah. You wrap them in bacon, the sausage condenses as it cooks or, or mm -hmm. gets smaller as it cooks, contracts, mm -hmm. and ends up holding the whole thing together. And it's phenomenal. It'd be great if you could drop the egg in there. I know it's hard boiled, but it'd be great if you could somehow get that egg in there intact. And when you cut that thing open, the yolk. They do. You, How, soft, that, you soft boil the egg. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. But I have mine cold. Like I'll, I'll do a dozen of them and you eat a couple of them warm and the rest of them throw in the fridge. And the the idea of a cold runny yolk does if they're warm is great. Right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. A cold no, runny yolk right. just doesn't do it. Well, I would I'd want that, you know, like I'd want to cook that, bring it off the grill, let it sit for let it rest for five, ten minutes, yeah. and then have it for breakfast. That and that's how, be, that's traditionally how they're supposed to be done. Yeah. Ken Ken's asking, uh, how do you reseason um he said, uh let's see, Mark, how do you take care of the cast iron grate? of an acorn. He says, so, I seasoned it when it was new, but haven't done anything but a wire brush to clean it before growing. Uh, so depending what you're doing with it, if all you're ever doing with it is grilling and smoking, you'll never have any high heat and the oil that you have typically from using it is good enough. And I spray mine down with, um, uh, Pam. Um, and I think Pam actually has a grill based one now, which is uh, grapeseed oil. Um, if you do pizza or you do like if I'm doing steak on mine, I'm doing it to 900 degrees and it'll burn all the oil out of the, it literally takes the cast iron back to yeah. raw. Yeah. Um, when I do that or pizza, the same thing as it's cooling down, I'll go back outside and I'll take a can of, of Pam. And so the fire's already gone out and I'll just liberally coat the thing with it. Um, and I haven't done much to it other than that since I got the grill. Oh. So just using regular stuff is fine. And then um, giving it a, a dose of uh, a Pam every once in a while. Extra bacon then, grease. Yeah. Well, indirect heat, you can do bacon on it. Right. Um, you can actually cook bacon on it easily. Yeah. You, yeah but yeah. like we talked about before, it, it turned from really good to really bad really quick. It goes, mm -hmm. it does go fast. Although the thicker the bacon, the better chance, I think the better chance you have on the grill. I thin bacon on the grill. The cheap it's stuff fast, you buy in the yeah. stores is awful. I try, I try to get it thick. We have a, we have a place called just good meats here in Omaha and you can get extra thick bacon there. And oh my God, it is. Just, well, you should have great amazing. meat there. We get Omaha steaks. Here. <laughs> yeah, oh <my laughs> Dude, we have the best. It's everywhere. Let me yeah. tell you. And some of the local places try to keep up with it. We have a, is it Fairway? I think a Fairway market and they have just a meat market yeah, mm -hmm. here in town. So they have grocery stores all over, but then they have one store that's just a meat market and they're trying to keep up with them. 
oh my god it's so good and you know the omaha steaks comes in a you know in a sealed right you know those come in sealed these are just like go to the go to the counter and pick yeah, up some bacon wrapped so. sirloins that are fresh you know and I, they haven't been frozen yet mm -hmm. so it's um uh, super, yeah, super good. You know, you at the start of this, you talked about something got into your grill and ate one of your gas lines. Yeah, or whatever it was. yeah, it was a, a couple yeah. of years ago. I thought I had a squirrel family in mind because it was a I have multiple babies. It turned out there wasn't squirrels; it was rats. Oh, um, yeah. So I killed, I killed them all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, since then I've got little, you know, the little grates or whatever that stuff is you can put in all your holes does not let any creatures through that. Um, because they, you know, you got all that old grease and whatever else in there. They'll want to get in there and get that stuff. Yeah. Well, there's another way to avoid that, to use it a lot. <laughs> That's true, but you've got to cool down at night. <laughs> got to cool down at night. And, Just, you know, like. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, no, I was not going to cook the rats. Oh, uh, man. I did find, I went outside uh, this weekend and was clearing some stuff off the deck for the Easter egg hunt. And I had a. Um, a flower, you know, a pot, felt flower pot that had filled up with water, and on the bottom of it was a was a mouse face down that he'd, he'd gotten in and couldn't get yeah. back out. And just, and I was like, oh, there we go. Yeah. Um. So it's it's that time of year. I have no idea what got to my. It, it could have been, been a squirrel. Could have been a rat. Been, you know, could have been rats or yeah. or mice. Uh, we don't have too many rats out here. But. Yeah, my, mine was probably more of a mouse than it yeah. was a rat. Yeah. Today. And just just gnawing on it, or because there were probably some grease drippings on it that they were just not. I don't. But know. you know the thing is, after you find a family in there, it's almost like I don't know if I want this grill anymore. <laughs> yeah. How do, how do I get that yeah. out of here where I'm not going to be thinking about rat while I'm eating my steak? Uh, so I cleaned it super good, bleach all kind of stuff before I got to the point. You know, cooked it multiple times, bleached it again, cooked it, and finally I said, "All right, I think I'm good." Yeah. Um, but I need to do my spring clean. I need to go through there, and, and I'm sure there's some parts inside those gas, those little gas burners. They, you know, only last so long before you got to replace them. You've got one. You. <laughs> I don't want to sit there and hold it the whole time, though. Hose it off with flames. <laughs> Heat does a lot of good. It does. The um, we had a, I had a buddy thing. buy a brand new grill, and so he bought it in the fall on sale, and then he put a cover on it, and and in the spring came around of uh, uh, he didn't use it right away and a robin family made a nest in it mm -hmm. and and um so the first time he goes to use it he opens it and there's a nice nest in there and three eggs and he had he had two little girls they were omelet they were like seven <laughs> and nine and they were gonna have nothing to do with moving this yeah nest so he let the nest he let the chicks be born then they grew up, then they flew away. And then he, he you know, he, he, but he could not, he was like, I can never eat on this grill. Like my wife will never let us eat anything off this grill again. It's, and it's, it would have been fine. I would have just yeah, yeah. turned it on full blast, let it, you know, let it cook everything out. And, uh, but he would, he's always, so he, he sold it. <laughs> That's sad. Yeah, this. You know, last right last time I talked about um, the grill gazebo, and I was actually at Lowe's today picking up, some gutters because I want to I want to build like a uh, rain thing underneath my deck. My deck, mm -hmm. part of it sits, I think the high part is 12 feet and the low part where I'm looking at is maybe like six feet. So I'm going to build some storage underneath there. And while I was there, I saw the grill gazebo again. And I almost bought it today. But when I got back and was looking on my deck, I just don't know. It will take up so much space on the deck. That I don't know I really want that. But the problem is if you're doing a overnight cook or a long, long cook, you know, what you don't want to have happen is it start pouring down raining if your grill is in the open. Um, but you're going to have trouble, even if it doesn't leak into the grill, you're going to have some trouble maintaining temperature. Yeah. Yeah. And then it may leak into the grill. About 120 bucks for those? Yeah, I think it was 149 So yeah. it wasn't too expensive. Yeah. Um, it was just, I don't know, I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. But I've had, to, yeah, I've taken the umbrella for our deck. Uh, you know, deck furniture, taking that out of the the little circled you know table, and going over and stand stood next to the uh, to the smoker while it was pouring down rain, and holding that thing. You know, the winds blowing, and I'm trying to hold it down. It's lightning and everything. I'm going, oh, this is, I can. The news going to say, idiot holding lightning rod during. <laughs> so, you, so you could protect also his. Uh, meat. Yeah. Also, he could have some good meat. Those yeah. that Sunjoy they, they, on on uh, Amazon, they have a Sunjoy eight by five soft safe uh, soft top, 
with four piece LED light in it. Yep, this one had that too. So you said, uh, let me look that one up. Might be the same one. So it's um, what's it called? It's Sunjoy. Sunjoy. Sunjoy, all one word. Soft top grill gazebo. One thirty four. I just suffer in the rain. Yeah, I don't. I do too. It, it's I get the it it evaporates off real fast on my grill. I have yeah, a, the, I have that a looks exactly umbrella. like it. Yeah, I have a patio umbrella that I put over top of it if I get if I get caught in it in the middle of it. But yeah. other than that, it's just yeah. And depending on what I'm using, if I'm using my Weber, I don't even worry about it. If I'm right. using my Traegers with electricity, I'm a little more cautious. But mm. that's what. I, so for my grill, it's generally going so hot, I'm not that worried about it. And I think it's the way it's built, built um, the lane will just fall off of it anyway. It's the pellet smoker that I'm worried about because, one, it's electric. Mm-hmm. It has electric things going on. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. You, maybe you can uh, tell me what you think, um, Mark, when you look at your rec tech, if Because of the way the, the lid is, if it rained hard enough, I think it would drip down in there. Into the pellets or into the electronics? Into, into the meat. No. You don't think I, it wouldn't would? be, I wouldn't be worried about water getting inside the cooking chamber. Okay. I don't, you know, the way the pellets are, I don't think it'd get into pellets. No, no. And even the electronics, uh, the guys I've talked to have cooked on them in the rain, not necessarily the Rectech, but on the Traegers, which yeah. are the same idea. There's nothing, it's a panel, there's a panel, and there's the control panel mounts to the back of the main panel. Yeah. Um, and the guys are running them with, with, I think one guy third got a shock, but other than that, everybody else I talked to just sort of, yeah, I do it all the time. And and some of the guys, like we treat our grills well. Like we cover them up all the time. Yeah. There's guys I've seen that have never covered their trigger at all. Oh, or rec- always packs. is covered. Yeah. yeah. Left the outside the entire time, cooked in the snow and rain and everything, and the thing still keeps on going. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't cover mine. I always lose those covers. Now, it's a, it's, it's a 1994 Sunbeam. So yeah. it's like I've had to run. A, I had to go buy a threaded um, cable to run through the middle of it so I could, you know, so I could tighten it up because it was bowing out from the heat so bad. (laughs) Right. So, uh, when I was replacing the burner, uh, this weekend, I was looking at that threaded and it's, uh, it is literally down to a thread. Like I have, you know, I have just burned that thing all the way through. So I have a feeling this season, nothing's going to pop. I'll need to replace, you know, I'll need to go out and replace it and put a new one in. I've never tied a barbecue to my deck before, but, with the amount of money I got invested in this Traeger yeah. now, I'm not, <laughs> you it's might not going wanna, anywhere. You might want to bolt that thing down so it doesn't go flying off the deck. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to look. I'm going to look around. I think I'm going to start looking this in, in the next couple of weeks for either a new or a used Weber or a, a, what was the other one? That, that, Tech. Uh, Acorn. Uh, Acorn. Oh, they had a big one of those huge Komodo Joes at Lowe's today. Yeah, they're, they're nice. nice. They're like a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I've, I was gonna buy like my. So I'm, I'm working my way through my my dream list of grills. So I haven't the Rec Tech is, is high on the list, so I'm happy now. And I have a nicely modified Traeger. The, a ceramic Komodo would be another one, but it would have to be either a Primo or a um, Komodo Joe. And only if I got it for the right price. Ken says Spreaker just cut off. Well, well, it seems to be working here. All see, right, Jets. I, I noticed y'all couldn't me... see my whole shirt, oh. so yeah. Don't mess. Don't mess with the grill master. Nice. Don't mess with the grill master. <laughs> and, and I thought it said Texas. <laughs> no, I don't live in Texas, and but it it doesn't. It doesn't have sleeves, and I don't like. I when I bought it, I didn't know it didn't have sleeves. Oh yeah, I am not a sleeveless guy. Right, yeah, me neither. So that's why I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath it. If yeah. you wonder what's happening here, I like it. I like it. I want to go grill right now. We're supposed to get snow tomorrow, so I'm I'm, I'm heading to Missouri to pick up my daughter. So, well, I think I don't know if we're going to grill this weekend. I think I'm going to need to. I'm going to have to figure out. You know, Mark, you kind of you've inspired me to do some wings. Wings are so awesome. Yeah. And easy. I did I did rotisserie yeah. wings last summer on my Weber. So high heat and they just kept on rotating the entire time and they were pretty good. I just found a Weber grill for thirty bucks, not too far from here. I'll have to Yeah, I looked at it. It's not the right one though. It's the um oh. it's got the ash pan, not an ash catcher. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'll keep looking around. 
it's you know what you, you're not in a rush for it right no people true. get them no. they just i'll just keep i'll just keep looking uh there is an acorn for a hundred bucks oh it's a junior it's a small one there's a I, I see this a weber limited edition charcoal grill and although it's a little far away it's in iowa um ankeny iowa limited edition weber it's red it's got the catcher nice looking um, that's 125 bucks. Well, you're about to go on a road trip with your, to pick up your daughter. Look well, that's wrong, the, wrong way. Look, well, just saying, look along the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I'm going to get down there. It's going to be snowing tomorrow when I go pick her up. So Is she in college I, right now? Where's she? I think, yeah. She's at Northwest Missouri state. Okay. So, yeah, I, I see that one for 125. She's yeah. She's, um, she is coming home. It's a nice color too. That's Husker red. Is it her spring break or something? Uh, no, uh, her brother is having a birth, big birthday party this oh, weekend. Okay. So he turns 24. This is a spring so. break here. In the, in the yeah. Syria. Yeah. We just did it. He, she was just home two weeks ago. So I'm going to go pick her up Friday and take her back Sunday. So she can Neither be. Neither of my boys came home from college on spring uh, break. Wow. They're both uh, yeah, 45 minutes. They're not that far away. They could have easily gone. come home. They're gone. You've lost them. That's the. <laughs> That's the first time you know Emily's, when they don't come home for spring break. Well, yeah, I think Emily's uh, baby's about to turn one. Mine, have, they're still technically live here, <laughs> but they're over in college and don't even come home on spring break. They didn't even come home for Easter. Uh, oh, oh, What is up with well, that? That's, that's offensive. That is, you, well, it wasn't that offensive to me, but it was really offensive to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, if we didn't, uh, if we didn't have kids come over for Easter, Sarah would be pissed. That would not. That would not go over well. We had people in. There's only my wife and I, and we had people in. We had we had uh, eighteen. We had eighteen people for dinner over two nights. So nine people a night. Not all the same people. Yeah. Friday and Saturday yeah, night. Uh, she likes. She likes it when they come over. She she so, makes cocktails. So yeah. It's good. See, Emily, you love these little babies, and then they grow up, and they don't come home for they Easter. Just disappoint you. That's all they do. They're just big children. Are just big disappointments. I, I was offer disappointed. Mine, do you know how much money I'm paying for your college? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I make them pay for it first, and oh, then okay. I help them with it when they. Because yeah. if they screw up, then I'm like, "Oops, on you." <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That's a good way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and my daughter, I know she's she's. She is the one I uh, made an exception for just because um, I knew she was going to get through. The boys were a little sketchy. Like, yeah, I don't know about these guys. And true to form, I had two, uh, to two of the three not get all the way through. So and then I had a fourth going to the Marines. So he's, yeah. he's hey, if you're listening live, we're going to cut you off. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, go eat. I'm going to go eat something. Like, I'm, I don't <laughs> Oh, well, it's it's cow. eleven o'clock here, so I should not go get it. Some no, you shouldn't. Content. It's on. So, guys, <laughs> thanks for celery. You guys, that's right. So, I I got a little hack for celery. So so hang tight. Hold on, I'll, I'll talk to you guys about it. So, guys, come around. Thanks for coming out tonight. We'll see you guys. See you guys. Next week. See, you. see ya.